If I had to pick one factor that would determine whether or not something was strength training or not, believe it or not, it would not be the weights. It would be the rest periods. Rest periods actually make strength training strength training. Without rest periods, you're just doing cardio with weights. Uh, this this one I think is important because so overlooked. It totally is. The rest periods people think they don't realize that it's an important part of the formula or that it plays a significant role. I think people think, oh, it's resting because you have to rest because you need the break. Mm -hmm. um, or if I'm using weights, then I'm strength training. So if I do an Orange Theory class or I'm doing circuit training, um, then as long as it's with weights or machines, it's it's all strength training. And I've even seen programs labeled as such. Yeah. You know, strength training group class. What to do in your rest period. Yes. You know, like, and there's the actual exercises in your rest period that you're supposed to do. So it's like, yeah, that's a weird thing that people don't understand the fact that um, you're just adding, adding more isn't better. This is creating a cardiovascular response. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my favorite tips you've done recently because – I actually think it's still really popular uh, with the average gym goer, <clears throat> and I, I th we see it still with fitness influencers in our space that have large followings, half a million, million followers, and they say lost a hundred pounds of weight, you know, crash dieting and exercising, and they love to, you know, put out circuit type of training exercises where they're doing a squat upright row or a lunge to bicep curl to shoulder press. And then they go to another exercise and there's, you know, they're sweating like crazy and they're promoting that type of training as strength training because they're lifting dumbbells. And really it's not, it's not, it's, it's so much closer to you just getting on a Stairmaster and going to, going to town uh, on the Stairmaster than it is actually to traditional Strength training. That's it. It's way closer to that than it is. Just because you're holding on the dumbbells doesn't make it is a great strength training no, what, routine at what all. What makes strength training strength training is are you using resistance, which can come from any source. It could be body weight, it could be a resistance band, a machine. Of course, traditionally, uh, it's been done with free weights, but it could be anything that provides resistance, literally. Gravity. And then, and then the rest periods. The rest periods are what make it strength training. So people are like, okay, well, why rest periods? What's that all about? You're training a energy system in the body that results in the, where the adaptation is to build strength and build muscle, okay? So when you're doing an exercise, there's different types of fuels that your body uses. And the fastest burning or hottest burning type of fuel happens anaerobically. So this is without oxygen. And it, it burns hot, it produces power, it produces uh, strength, but it burns out quickly. And when it burns out, then your body becomes, it starts to use anaero or excuse me, aerobic type energy, glycolytic energy. Now there's, there's definitely crossover. So I know the science nerds are going to go on. You'll be like, well, technically you're using a little, whatever. Okay, fine. Yeah. But so I'm overgeneralizing, but uh, really what it is, 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 is what I'm saying. Once you burn that out, which short rest periods or no rest periods, especially does that. You went from anaerobic, which is strength and muscle building, to aerobic the entire time. And it doesn't matter if you use dumbbells. doesn't matter if you use barbells. doesn't matter. Use a jump rope. It, yeah. it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, if I'm focusing on training and working through the energy system that produces the adaptation of strength and muscle, well, now I'm building muscle. By the way, okay, even uh, running can be done in a way to build muscle if you understand this. Mm -hmm. Sprinting. Yep. If I did a short, hard sprint – that is actually going to induce some hypertrophy in my legs versus a long distance type of run. You see that in the, you know, the physicality of the athlete. That's right? right. Yeah. It's pretty obvious and glaring when you see a sprinter versus a marathon runner. Right. So if you want all the benefits of strength training that we've talked about many times, building muscle, boosting metabolism, androgen receptor density, sculpting, shaping the body, um, strength, all that stuff, then you need to have rest periods. Otherwise, you're not doing strength training. So again, if, if you had to define what makes strength training strength training and you had to pick one factor, believe it or not, it's the rest periods that define it more than, than the type of resistance that you use, which, um, you know, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a paradigm shifting way of thinking about it, but it does need to be communicated this way because, uh, I, I mean, like you, like you said, Adam, the average person, they think of strength training anytime they see weights being involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when body pump was a popular class in the gyms that I would manage. 
Body Pump was a group exercise class that used free weights. Um, and the idea was it's a strength training group class. Well, if you watch Body Pump, they're not strength training. It's literally going from one exercise to another exercise to another exercise. It's, it's cardio. It's no different than the step classes that happened well, you know, before it mm -hmm. or whatever. It's the same thing, um, except they're just using weights and they're using weights as a gimmick. As a yeah. gimmick to sell to people like, oh, you've heard about strength training? It's, it's a marketing tactic. That's and, right. And we've seen this um, sort of evolve in our career of ways to to pull people into these types of um, uh, group training uh, classes. It's not as popular to to have rest periods and stop. And, you know, they're they're very momentum based and they it's experiential based. Yes. So, um, you know, all the emphasis was always on. Um, obviously there's a communal effect and, and you have accountability in terms of like your friends. And so it, there's appeal there for that. But in terms of the actual workouts, it, it evolved into something that's a continual pace. Like we're, we're moving to the, to the music. Uh, there's a beat to it. Everybody just has to keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and so this just conveyed to the person in there that that's how I have to always train is like always doing something and moving and rest isn't really as much of a priority. Such a good point, Justin, that all the energy and effort is is put into the experience when it comes to- To making it entertaining. Yeah. I wouldn't I mean, even use experience. It's I would very, use the word it's very, it's very similar to what we talk about, the science that goes into processed foods. Like it's not it's not being engineered to be healthy and good no, for you. total parallel. It's being, it's being yeah. engineered to taste good and get you addicted to it so you eat more and you buy more. The same thing goes for these class-based type of, you know, circuit training with weights is it is designed to entertain you, to keep you coming back for more because it's fun and it's exciting and there's and loud- And it hurts and it's sweaty. It's loud music playing yeah. and there's a rhythm to it mm -hmm. and you get the, and then you get the cortisol junkies that love the sweat and the energy and the endorphins that you get from it. And so it's all about this experience- that they are chasing to sell you on the idea that it's good for you. And the truth is that the best way, the right way, just isn't as sexy. Mm -hmm. Just isn't. It's not as, it's. A, I mean, I also think of when I compare, when I recently had a talk about our business um, in my Hampton group and, you know, they talk about like, you know, our competitors or what we saw in the marketplace and how we, how did we know that we'd have this successful business? And I'm like, well, it was easy. I said that one of the biggest monsters in this space is Beachbody. And Beachbody is also an example of a company that you know, grew to you know billion plus dollars, all based off of marketing to all mm -hmm. these things that we're talking about. Uh, they weren't great programming at all. It was horrible programming at best. Uh, but what they were brilliant at was their ability, their ability to market to people uh, mm -hmm. with these experiences. You know, arguably you, the best at it. They are. That's why they're, they're, they were the most successful. And I knew, we knew that all we had to do was convince a small percentage of those people, which would be, we knew would be easy because so many people had tried that and failed, that there is actually a much better approach to exercise and fitness if your goal is overall health, strength, body composition change. Mm -hmm. There's a right way to do it. It's not as entertaining. It's not as sexy. You know, you can't do it to a beat so much, but... I tell you what, you do it and you'll you'll recognize and you follow it to a T, you'll see how much better it is. And then we knew that all we had to do is get a sliver of that business and be able to share that with the right amount of people and then it would do well. Look, it's uh there's there's a there's a few reasons for what you're saying, um, Adam. And this is why I think coaches and trainers play such an important role. Because the experience uh can be amazing when people have the understanding of what they're doing and the expectation matches the experience. So yeah. what I mean by that is you take the average results. Well, you take the average person whose expectation uh, with workouts is what? What's their expectation? Oh, it's going to be hard. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to get sore. We're going to be moving a lot. So then they go into a class and it's traditional strength training where they do a set. And because they're beginners, it's not going to be super intense, right? It's all about form and technique and, oh, make sure your technique is here. Okay. Your squat is a little here. Try this correctional exercise. Now we're going to rest for two minutes or three minutes. Okay. Now we're going to do this movement. They're going to be like, that sucked. It would be like going to a dinner, expecting a quiet dinner with your wife and you sit down and then a circus happens around you, right? You'd be like, this sucks. This is not what I expected. Now, if you went in expecting a circus, you'd be like, this is, this makes sense. The average person's expectations they don't understand strength training. They don't understand what it's supposed to feel like. They don't understand 
the results, what it's supposed to produce, what it does for them. But I think if we change those expectations, like if somebody who listened to our show on a regular basis showed up to a class and they experienced real strength training, they would leave and be like, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big part of the problem. And part of it is the, the industry itself. The industry capitalizes on these short windows of motivation, yeah. these short windows of self-hate. The person feels fat. They're ready to do whatever. They're, they, they, it's cathartic to beat the crap out of themselves. And if they almost throw up, they think they did a phenomenal job. And they capture that. And the person's probably experienced it before or they see it on TV. What do you see when you watch TV or go on media? Well, your, your workouts don't, they look like they're supposed to be that way. That's, oh, that's what you're supposed to do to get fit. So you try and do a traditional, <clears throat> real strength training class. You ain't going to get anybody to sign up uh, to show up. And if they do, they'll leave. Cause like, what was that? That was, that was nothing. I mean, how, what percentage of our job as trainers was getting someone's expectations to change and understand what was happening to their body so that they could follow along with us and do and understand what we were doing. I would say the majority 90%, yeah. 10% was actually instructing. 90% was helping that person understand what's going on, what to expect. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, you know, oh, but I'm supposed to be, aren't I supposed to be super sore or I'm not really sweating after my workout. And then I have to explain and educate and change their expectations. And then if they were patient, they would start to notice things and they'd be like, wow, I feel really good. And oh my God, it, this is easier than I thought. And you know, my favorite was always, this is weird. I'm getting leaner. I don't feel like I'm starving myself. Mm -hmm. What's happening here. So I think there's a lot of education that has to uh, continue to happen, but strength training is still to this day, even people who are experienced with fitness. It, okay. Even those people, how many times like the, per, like the people that you you were just talking about the, the example of those fitness people, right? Quote unquote fitness people. If, if we tried to convince them to rest in between sets, they don't listen. No, they don't listen. We can message them all day and be like, Hey, I see what you're doing on your social media. I know you're trying to, you know, heal from whatever damage you did and you're trying to whatever. Part of the problem is you're not resting. Part of the problem is you're taking four exercises and you're combining it into one because it makes you sweat more. Yep. That's part of the problem. Here's what you should do. It's going to go in one ear, out the other. Unless I can get my hands on them and actually train them for a month so they can actually experience what we're talking about. Like, yeah. good luck. It's an uphill battle. It's almost impossible. That's it, why I'm not worried about AI trainers. <laughs> anytime soon yeah. we're, we're going to need real people to always help to uh you know really talk a lot of these people off off of the, whatever they're doing right now there's there's a lot to unpack uh based off of like what we get marketed to on a daily basis and uh people's expectations are very far uh, removed from the actual experience so i just i it, it, it actually, I mean, it's kind of deflating, but it also motivates me that like, there's so much opportunity out there still for coaches Look, and trainers. If you do traditional, good, effective, general strength training, and you were to add up the time you were actually lifting and add up the time you were resting, guess what? More of your workout is resting for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Like a set takes you how long typically? 30 seconds maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're resting two minutes or three minutes. Yeah. Uh, even a minute and a half. Yeah. Okay. You rest more than you work. That's a workout. It's hard for people to wrap their brain. They don't. On that. It makes no sense to them. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? We're sitting around. We're resting. You know how many? You know, in, in new clients, right? After yeah. a while, they understood this. But how many times with new clients would you have this conversation over? Like, okay, what do we do now? Well, mm -hmm. nothing. We rest. We rest. I don't need rest. I feel like I can go again. That's not how it works. And we'd have to you, explain. You that. have to talk about the other part of the equation too, Sal. That the diet culture exacerbates this situation too, because the people are taught that you cut calories, restrict, restrict. And you also add in this cardio based type of training. So but you have to burn. Like if you were, if you were uh, dieting really hard, it, like the, what the diet culture is, you know, just cut calories, cut calories. Um, it would be far less detrimental to strength train properly than it would be to do cardio based, uh, you know, quote unquote strength training. So that's the other part that, of the equation that I don't think people realize is that that's, uh, you're, you're, you're like, double shooting yourself in the foot. Oh, by adding that in? Yeah. Yeah, because now you're adding a signal that says we don't need muscle. That's what I'm saying. And we need to learn how to burn less calories through activity. Yes. So you actually- So you, down. that's where my point. Yeah. My point is people already diet poorly, right? They, are, they, 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 they swing that pendulum too hard, right? Or they cut way too much yep. too fast. Uh, or, they, or they focus just eliminating on the diet and they don't look at uh, balancing or hitting protein intake, things like that. And so that's already not a good strategy dieting wise. 
But if you were doing that, which is not a good strategy, and at least strength training properly, it would be less detrimental than if you do that with cardio-based type of training. Yeah, you'd the, still be the, preserving muscle. The most then. important thing you need to focus on when you cut calories, the most important thing is to find a way to not lose muscle or lose as little as possible. That's the most important thing that you could do when you're cutting calories, aside from making sure you get adequate nutrients and, and the basics. Now, why? Because your body's going to want to pair muscle down. And when it does, it makes, first off, your weight loss become just weight and not body fat. And number two, it makes future weight loss more difficult. And number three, it makes sustaining weight loss very challenging, it makes it very challenging. So anytime you're cutting your calories, your goal should be, how can I maintain my muscle as much as possible? Well, the best way to do that is to do the thing that sends the most the loudest, most um, effective muscle building signal to your body, which is traditional strength training. So if you cut your calories really low and you do really good strength training, you're going to lose less muscle for sure than if you cut calories and do nothing, or if you cut calories and then do forms of exercise that don't send a muscle building signal, that in fact, oftentimes send a signal that says, pair muscle down. And the, the, the data on this is very clear, very, very clear. Dieting or dieting plus cardio results in significant muscle loss. Uh, so you, you know, lose 10 pounds, three, three to five of that is coming from muscle. That doesn't sound so like a great strategy. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. Adam, I have to address this. Um, it, I can't believe I have to keep talking about this. It's so annoying. This has to be the most annoying, mm -hmm. frustrating thing that I hear communicated in the fitness space. Okay. Yeah. Because it causes so much damage. I hate this. Uh, fitness influencers. There was one in particular that did a post uh, and we don't need to call anybody out. So that's to my editors. Don't post who it is unless they say something, in which case we'll call them out. But I hate it when they come on there and they say things like trying to build muscle to speed up your metabolism is a waste of time. And then they use this math right here. A pound of muscle burns maybe 12 extra calories a day. What they're doing is they're oversimplifying. Way oversimplifying. They're oversimplifying the second most complex thing we've identified in the universe, which is mammalian metabolism. Okay. They've oversimplified it to say mus this much, one pound of muscle burns this many calories. That's it. End of story. There's nothing else that plays a role in metabolism. There's, there, it, that's just how it is. So gaining muscle, you know, my God, if you gain 10 pounds of muscle, which is really hard, it's only 120 calories. Who cares? It doesn't work that way. And it confuses a lot of people. The average person is going to watch that and go, oh, okay, well then I guess it's a waste of time. Right. I'm just going to try and eat as little as possible because why, why try to positively affect my metabolism? You know, I've been voicing this for a while, man. I get so fired up yeah, about what's that. The desired outcome. With well, that? I remember the very first time I talked about it on the show, I got really pissed because I I used to use example the original research that came out that they had estimated. Which, by the way, that just shows you how much this has changed too. Like, still the original research estimated somewhere between forty and sixty calories a day more right. that muscle would. And I used to love that number, not because I believed that it to be so exact or true, but that it gave me a number that I could give my clients like an analogy or say, imagine if we can yeah. just add five pounds of muscle to your body, that's like a Big Mac a day that your metabolism naturally is going to burn just by it. And it would put in perspective right. how powerful building the metabolism is and building muscle is. And so it would it would help me get buy-in from my client on why we'd want to focus this. So that was the that was early research. In early days of mind pumps, this is seven, eight years ago when I would talk about that. I remember first this was the some of the original stuff where I'd get uh, messages and you know your fitness dork that was on the latest research on what that was saying that would be arguing with me. No, it's 10 calories. Oh, that's it's five way, calories. That's a way over. That was That's false. That's not true anymore. The more recent studies show that it's more like 17 calories or, or whatever it is. And meanwhile, I have all these case studies of clients where all we've added is five pounds of muscle, yet they're eating 500, 800 more calories a day, virtually doing the same stuff. By the way, that's common. You're, you're not talking about like an extreme example. No. That was all the time. Everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody that I've ever got to eat or to build five or 10 pounds of muscle in their body radically changed what they could consume. Now, what we also miss in that conversation, this is why I, I hate uh, deducing everything down to a six month scientific study about one part of the body because none of the body works that way. There's so many other factors, <laughs> yeah. not just physiologically, but even psychologically and behaviorally. Mm -hmm. So what happens to a client that, you know, first of all, we know how difficult 
it is to build five pounds of muscle. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline around your diet. It takes consistency around hitting protein. It takes consistency around lifting weights. And a it good takes consistency, a consistency around rest. Mm -hmm. So a lot goes in to somebody who get who actually added five pounds of muscle to their body frame. What else do you think happens behaviorally and psychologically to that person who did that? Absolutely. Their habits change, their energy levels are more. They probably even move like they're they're uh they're uh what's the, the term I'm looking for for when they're uh oh, not they're intentionally neat. they're neat. neat. Their neat goes up. There's so many things that are happening that you don't even realize. when they go and they lift weights now. They, because they've built muscle, they Better feel stronger. So their intensity naturally goes up and all that. There's so many things that get incrementally turned up or changed that collectively make an impact on the metabolism and how many calories your body burns throughout the day. So to do sit down to a stupid, you're kept one pound of muscle versus one pound of fat, yeah. what is the difference of calories it burns, is such a terrible message to present to so many people out there that are struggling with weight loss because one of the best and most powerful things that you can do to aid your fat loss is to actually build muscle. It will make that not only easier for it to happen for you, but also sustainable. Fact. Anybody mention, else that says otherwise, fuck you. It's a yeah, fact. All the protective benefits you get from muscle and all these new studies and everything that came out and like, there's just so much more it does for your immune system, for all the other systems. Again, to your point, to work it's, better. It's, it's not. It's not just a one to one here. We're we're working with this we, is a, a you know systemic. Yeah, we also look, how about hormones. We, we also know this. This the, okay. We also know this that the same lean body mass, okay, not changing your lean body mass. There seems to be a range of calories that a person can burn. All things being equal, so activity controlled, everything controlled. Same lean body mass, but some differences in diet or stress or whatever, the body will burn more or less calories, okay? Your body can become more wasteful or less wasteful with how it produces and, and makes energy. That's a fact. By the way, if it was as easy as, as saying a pound of muscle burns 12 calories and that's that, then we would be able to take two people with the exact same lean body mass and we'd be able to calculate that they burn exactly the same calories so long as they move the same. It doesn't work that way. Or- I'd be able to change someone's hormones, change nothing, nothing else. Why all of a sudden they're leaner? Why are you getting leaner? Because I change your hormones. Building muscle doesn't just burn more calories because you have more muscle. It also has androgen receptor densities, increase, improves insulin sensitivity. It's mm -hmm. a storage vessel for glycogen. It produces chemicals that we're just learning about now that are anti-inflammatory, pro-fat loss, uh, that improve cognitive function. Like, and not only that, but the metabolism is so complex, we still have yet to fully so understand it. It's so arrogant of us to do it's that. It's so dumb to look at a study that says that. And basically what you're doing, this is what makes me so mad, right? Yeah. It makes me so mad because it's gaslighting people. Yeah. Uh, medical community, or should I say people who represent it, maybe in media, can often do this. Well, where, where all these people are experiencing things. Like, my kid, when they eat you know, red dye number whatever... Uh, they act crazy, and all these moms are like, "My kid does too," and they're like, "No, no, you're full of crazy." It doesn't work. It's in your Science head. Says it doesn't. It's all in your head. Your kid probably lost sleep. Your kid, whatever, right? And then years later, study comes out. Oh shit! Some kids are sensitive to red dye number whatever. I can't remember the number, but there's actual red dye that some kids are sensitive to. Uh, food intolerances, right? Leaky gut syndrome or whatever. It's so annoying because we get gaslit. Coaches and trainers who hear that stupid message from fitness influencers, some of these with a million followers, no, noise is shit out of me, feel like they're being gaslit. Like, wait a minute, I've trained a lot of people. I've seen my clients go from eating 1,200 calories to eating 2,200 calories, and she gained like five pounds of muscle. I'm not packing 40 pounds of muscle on her, and she's leaner, and her activity level doesn't add up to the amount of calories that she's burning now because, in fact, she was doing so much cardio before I switched her to strength training. So how does that make any sense? And then what are they being told? Oh, you're not, you must not be calculating properly. You're not counting. Like you're, no, 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 you're an idiot. It's like, it's like women will complain about this when they go to the doctor, they'll go to the doctor and they complain about these symptoms and the doctor will be like, it's all in your head. No, 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 you're fine. It's all in your head. You leave and you're questioning your like reality. Like it's yeah. so terrible. But the, the, the part that makes me most uh, pissed off about this is how much damage are these idiots with all these followers doing when they maybe hear a message because we're starting to popularize the message, right? That building muscle is a great way to burn body fat, right? Maybe they heard that message somewhere and they're like, oh, I heard, 
I heard building muscle is a good idea. You know, I know I've tried to lose weight before and it was really hard. And, you know, I did all the, I did all the cardio and I cut my calories like crazy. It was impossible to sustain and I gained it back. Now I'm hearing building muscle. Maybe I should start, start strength training to lose fat. And then someone sends him the stupid clip of this moron being like, one pound of muscle only burns 12 cal. Oh yeah, you know what? That You know what? I guess you're right. I'm not going to try strength training. I'm going to go back to my Orange Theory classes or I'm going to go back to yeah. what I did before. Causing so much freaking damage. It's not even funny. Again, trainers and coaches have experienced this time and time again. You can reverse diet people. You can speed up metabolisms. You can slow metabolisms down. Some of it has to do with the muscle building process. Some of it is a bit mysterious, but we do know for a fact through experience that if you do the things necessary to build muscle and you start to build muscle and get stronger, you don't need to build a ton of it. But if you move in that direction, even if you don't build muscle, you see a positive influence in terms yeah. of a faster metabolism. And it's predictable. Yeah. It's reliable and predictable. The I, lifestyle I, and behavioral benefits that you, you just can't, can't account Can't even argue for. that. No, yeah. that's the part That's the part too that pisses me off because we do that so much in the space. And, and one of the things, and it took me, over a decade of training people before I realized like, oh my God, all this schooling, all these certifications, all this stuff that I, I based everything off the science, like 90% of my job became centered around behavioral science, which nothing of, none of that is taught for us trainers. It's not like you, they go in and go like, that is going to be where you, you focus most of your time. That's where I spend all of my time later. That's most like, effective area. it's just like the artificial sweetener crowd. It's not bad. Data shows it's not bad. It's whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, but why is it that people go and try to drink artificial, artificially sweetened beverages and they don't lose weight? Oh, because they're eating more of other food. Okay, well, why are we discrediting that? Do you don't think that that may be influencing them to eat more or maybe there's something else that's going on? Or maybe the perception of sweetness has a lot more to do with just calories. Mm -hmm. Maybe that can alter yeah. somebody's behaviors as well. You don't think that they're, you think it's just innocuous because in a controlled setting where everything's totally controlled, which is not real life, that you can definitely cut someone's calories with artificial sweeteners and they lose weight. Yet in the real world, we have, it, artificial sweeteners have been around for a long time. Uh, zero impact, zero impact on obesity. It hasn't helped anybody. It helps competitors who track every single thing they put yeah. in their mouth. That's always been my discussion with them. So yeah, oh, there's no data to show that it causes cancer, even though maybe it does and I don't know, whatever, and in this control. I don't care. I've never had a client, never had a client well, that was a game changer. Yeah. Artificial it's never was never been helpful. It was never so, a game changer for me yeah. ever. You know, the irony of that, uh, that whole thing you're talking about, I posted in our forum expressing my disappointment, right? Cause it happens to be somebody who I actually uh, like, and I like a lot of their stuff. And I was really disappointed in, uh, that post just because of how large their following is and how many, I know confuse people. The irony of it was our forums constantly moving, right? There's lots of people that are engaged and talking in there all the time. And so you, know, you could put a post up and then seconds later, someone else is putting a post up and it's constantly moving. The very next post that hit with, with less than 15 seconds after I've pushed my, which this lady obviously was already typing this while I was typing mine, pops right up underneath me. And it's literally somebody who has tried dieting their whole life, struggled and had up and down, up and down, mm. finally listen to our messaging around focus on getting strong, throw the scale away. Don't worry about that. Just build muscle, build muscle. And she's expressing where her calories were at when she first started this journey and where the, it was like, a, I, I will look it up. Maybe Doug can pull it up and find it in there, but it was like 1500 calories to like 2,500 calories. Wow. You cannot tell me this woman built 40 pounds of muscle. Okay. <laughs> she didn't fucking build 40 pounds of muscle, but I believe her when she says she was eating 1500 and now she's eating 2,500 and she's not gaining any weight because I've seen that happen a thousand fucking yeah. times. Yeah. First so, hand. And I know she didn't put 40 pounds of muscle on. So the irony of, that post, you know, going out. And then I literally had just wrote about it and talked about it. And then right after that, somebody sharing uh, an experience they just had of finally listening to that advice of ours of stop worrying about the scale so much, stop worrying about cutting so hard, build some muscle, get stronger, focus on that, trust the process, get rid of the scale. I promise it'll pay off for you. And her thanking us for that experience. Like I thought that was so, so, <laughs> so wild, right? Oh, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Today's program giveaway is maps strong here's how you can win that program leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications if you win we'll let you know in the comments section we're also running a sale maps bands is half off and the hard gainer bundle of programs is half off you can find both if you click on the link at the top of the description below all right here comes the show
Hey, did you guys, what do you, oh, so do you think we should talk about that FDA thing on the peptides? Do you think we should bring that up? Because that, that's a that's an internal I do want you to talk memo. about it because I, I want to. Interesting. The, there's yeah. a, a part of me that was a little concerned about it, and mm -hmm. should I be concerned? Or is this just. Um, I, th I think it's a warning. It's a prequel is what's happening. Like, I'm going to pull it up here. I got to find it. Uh, it's in our post with the. Uh, with Jay, but it's interesting. So it's a. Is this just because they're getting more attention and like popularity because of the GLP ones and whatnot? Well, funny thing is, GLP ones were not put in this. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, so because those are now. Uh, uh, that's right. Patented. Yeah. So this was FDA. This is so right now, you can get peptides legally through a pharmacy if a doctor prescribes it, and compounded pharmacies will make it for you. Okay, they'll produce it. So these are real pharmacies. Right, look, we work with with MPM, excuse me, MPHormones.com is our link. You go there, you work with a doctor, they can do hormone replacement therapy, and they can prescribe you peptides, okay? And we've done now, I don't know, four or five episodes with experts on peptides. Uh, one of my favorites was with Dr. Seeds, where they talk about the benefits, why they're not like drugs, and so, for, so on and so forth. And I have experience now using them. I think they're pretty phenomenal. Um, but you know, they're not, you can't patent them. It'd be very difficult to patent them, uh, because of how they're made and you What's can change amino acid. Yeah. And it's just, they're easy to, to, so you'd have to have special regulations now. They'd have to create a new regulation to kind of stop mm. this, right? Because peptides have incredible promise for treating, um, chronic illness, disease and stuff like that. And you know, that's in direct competition with things that are patented. So they don't want to put the brakes on this whole process. Well, so they put out this um, this memo and it says safety risks associated with certain bulk drug substances nominated for use in compounding. And they named, you know, quite a few. BPC-157 was in there and, um, you know, just CJC-1295 is in there, Dihexa is in there and, and more. And they put them in there and they're basically saying like, hey, this is like, we, we got to kind of start looking at this. Typically, what this means is they're t they're basically letting everybody know we're about to drop the hammer and make it so that compound pharmacies are not going to be able to make these things, which is annoying to me, to say the least. I think it's really frustrating because then your only option will be to go through um, research chemical labs, which are now unregulated, which you can do now, but uh, you could still go through a pharmacy now, which is uh, ideal, right? Because it's under the same... It's, it, they have to meet certain regulatory standards and doctors have to prescribe them. Uh, but if they do go through and, and, and ban them, uh, it's going to make that market, that gray market explode. And if they block that gray market, then you'll have a black market. And I mean, what's your, what, what is the likelihood of that's the direction it's going to go? Do you think it's high? With them releasing this, I think it's, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I wouldn't say 90, you know, 80%, 90%. I'd say we're, it's on the radar for sure that uh that this is potential for mm. otherwise they wouldn't have put out this memo this internal memo or whatever to so we'll see what happens yeah. uh but it seems to be this seems to be the uh the path that they go whenever things are available that are efficacious are released that have the potential this is my my own opinion that have the potential to outcompete um you know prescription yeah. drugs i mean, I mean the the Pharmaceutical industry is massive. They have the biggest lobby yeah. in the world. They're very if intricately tied. They can't tied. control the the market like exclusively. You, you tend to see patterns of these sort of making their way out of uh, the market. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But, Frustrating. Um, yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't go in that direction because then I mean, there's a lot of people who are like, "Oh my god, this is like BP." It's funny they listed BPC one five seven most widely used. Yeah. Um, probably safest, one of the safest peptides, lots of health benefits. Such a helpful one. Too. Athletes. Yeah. yeah. Using it, people with injuries using it speeds up healing. Um, probably cause it's so popular that was listed on there. Maybe because I don't know. I mean, people use that and don't use, um, did you talk to our, we, have a, they don't do that. we have a new friend in the space that hasn't been introduced to our audience yet, but will soon. I have not actually, deal. Good, no, I should ask him. Yeah. I would love for you to talk to a deal about it. Yeah. I feel like he would have an even better pulse on that since how, if it's how, happen. how connected he is. Yeah. Yeah. Strange that he didn't bring that up when we were together because that I, was, this came out after. Oh, okay. When yeah. we got that, it had just come out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you have to ask him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to hear his opinion. We'll his, see. Well, his, I mean, I mean, look, I'll, look, I'll give you an example of We'll know early. I'll give you an example of how weird they are. 
Um, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, I think is how you pronounce it. NAC was a supplement that has been, uh, been um, available for decades, two decades, two and a half decades, okay? It, when you take it, it increases glutathione production in the liver. It's got some protective, very, very, um, like some documented protective effects on the lungs. During COVID, there were some studies coming out showing that NAC could be a really important nutrient to take. And there were studies showing that low glutathione levels were connected to being hospitalized from COVID during that period of time, out of nowhere. Okay, remember NAC was available in supplement stores mm -hmm. forever, very safe, whatever. Out of nowhere, they put out a notice, stop selling this, we're gonna start regulating this. Now they since backtracked, interesting enough, but I remember you couldn't buy NAC on Amazon. Amazon's like, oops, we can't sell this anymore. And they've done this before with, with, with other things. It's really yeah. Uh, no competing treatments can't yeah. help but your conspiracy like cackles to go up with stuff. Oh, like I mean, Me meanwhile, they're uh, so it, it's kind of funny. Um, I was looking at what they've done over the years to animals and experiments and all these kinds of things. Uh, there was a, a latest one that I saw that I was kind of laughing, but um, with octopus. And so scientists have figured out a way because they've, they've had a hard time, I guess, in some isolated incidents of getting them to mate um, because they get really hostile with each other. They, play, so, they play Barry White or something. So now they're, get, they're giving them ecstasy, basically. MGMA. What? <laughs> <laughs> they're having great success with it. Really? <laughs> yeah. So explain that, you know, yeah. like, you, you I'm I'm like studying my whole life to be a scientist. You know, I get into the to research How like fun. animals, and now I'm get to play with ecstasy in animals, making them have sex. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't remember which one of you brought Whose it up idea first. Was that, man? I have hilarious. no idea. I, well, I don't remember hilarious. which one of you brought it up first, but I remember it was a long time ago. We we went down this rabbit hole of all the different animals that seek all these like psychedelic like things. Oh yeah. Like there's a lot like, like weird stuff that I didn't even like the, like the birds that would allow like red ants to, to sting bite them, to yeah, sting high. them oh, yeah. underneath their wing. And like, there's a lot of animals that do things chasing these, these interesting highs. Or they'll we, eat like fermented fruit. Yeah. Reindeer, and get drunk eat, off of it. Uh, yeah. Mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that movie cocaine bear based on a real story? It, yeah. it is, but it's all exaggerated. I mean, it's, of course. yeah, but I can't yeah. think of anything more terrifying than I don't mind an octopus on ecstasy. That'd be kind of cool. A bear on cocaine. <laughs> you better get the hell out. Can you out. imagine all those little tentacles and everything? They're just like, whoa, oh, man. Brr. Like, oh. it's the ultimate rave uh, partner. <laughs> sounds sounds yeah. like weird uh, anime <laughs> porn. Did you see what the, study, the, the article said at the top? No, Scroll I up missed to the top. it. I love that. This I so thought I saw MDMA. Look, look, yeah. Octopuses. Yeah. It's octopuses? I thought it was octopi. I know. I, I think both that. are correct. Wow. Okay. Oh, Thanks, hey. Doug. Octopuses get strangely cuddly on the mood drug ecstasy. Well, what do you mean strangely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that strange? <laughs> Said someone who's never taken that drug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I had no idea this would happen. Uh, we got we got octopus to create to pitch business ideas by giving them cocaine. All of a sudden, they were talking about working together, making business ideas. Uh, this is obviously so that's an old article. Were you reading some old shit? I or guess what, I, uh, you know it, you would Sal stumbled across. You Sal uh, have some random shit sometimes come up and I'm like this this just. Happened. 1997. No, it was 2018. It's yeah. not that, it's not I mean, that long. Ago. I guess it is, right? Was that yeah. six years? Yes, that's cool. Oh, it's man. a little ways ago. Time was before the pandemic. Dude, Justin, I got to ask you this. You yeah. you might know who this is. Have you ever heard of? It? You're, I like scary, like scary myths and like Mothman and shit like that. Oh yeah, I heard of a new Same. one. Apparently, this was pretty popular, and there's videos of it. Have you heard of Babar Zags? No. The Serbian dancing dancing lady. No. Oh, Doug, look up. I have not. Doug, look up uh, B A B A R and then Z A G S. That's the two words or Serbian dancing lady. On so, can you shout out Organifi while he's doing that? Oh, so is this some okay? Yeah, well, actually, you know, speaking of Organifi, I started drinking the green juice every day again. I haven't done that in a while. I, every time I every time I start up again, I, I, I'm upset that I stopped. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. I'm only I'm only really good and consistent when I travel with it. It's I've, I've trained myself that we keep all the packets. At it the always house. makes me feel good. It's just yeah. a feel good oh. uh, supplement. Of and that. I should because I'm not. Uh, I'm not, I think you're the, actually the best out of all of us with the, your large servings of vegetables. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm, I never a day goes by that I don't have any vegetables, but yeah, I, I would say one meal a day is like what I, I have a decent size serving, which it's, and I don't think enough for me. I definitely, I remember after we had, um, what doctor was that? What's her name? Oh, uh, uh Dr. Terry Walls. Yeah. I was I old Walls. Yeah. I, 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 
I mean, that was that really I hit was it on home. A kick after that, yeah. Too. I was on a hardcore kick after that because the amount of of vegetables that she was saying to to get, like really maximize all the micronutrients that you're getting from it was like way more than I was getting close to. So, which also led me to be more consistent with the Organifi juice, and I've stayed that way with travel because I've just made that habit. But when I'm home, I I have to be better about I'm it. I'm like that too. So, yeah. but I just started. I don't know if you guys see me. I've been throwing it in my water, and I always feel great. Yeah. So I, I'll start back up. I'll you know me. I'll be consistent for a little while did you find it doug her name again babar b-a-b-a-r and then z-a-g-s so there's videos of so it's okay so i'll tell you what the yeah, what the it. what the myth is or okay. what the story is it's this woman this random woman that you'll run into in the middle of the night or you'll see out your window and if she sees you she starts dancing she starts doing the serbian dancing and she'll dance until she catches your attention and when she catches your attention she'll lock eyes with you and then kill you what? And there's videos of her dancing just like this. Wait, wait. Look at this. Look at this. What do you mean? That's the, you? that's the Serbian dancing lady. So, and she dances like that every time. There's tons of videos on this woman just randomly doing that in the middle of the night. And then there's been videos of people walking up to her and then she looks at them and then goes after them. What? Yeah. <laughs> How's she not in prison, bro? That, I, because it's a ghost, obviously, Adam. Come on. Oh, you're saying like that this is like not a real No, person. it's like a scary entity. They're not dying though for real uh they? there's been some i mean i don't know the myth is that there's been some see there, there's reporting on it there's oh, been, actually yeah look, look. On it. she'll see you if she sees you she dances to lure you in and it's that same weird dance wow. and then there's been some murders uh connected with the serbian dancing what ladies. i know it's in a specific town in in serbia and there is a lot of local authorities complaints on it i haven't seen anything about deaths uh but even like the local serbian news covers it yeah, See, dude. I want to know the backstory of this lady, right? Like, what, what, uh, if you're going to create this legend behind this, like, what, what, what caused her to want to harm people? Like, what's, yeah. you know, there's always something. We actually got into this show that's, that's captivating us right now. We're into the ghost shows, oh, okay. you know, and all that kind of stuff. You're back right? on that kick. We're back on that kick. There, <laughs> there was one on Discovery Channel that's like really gets no airtime that should. Um, and it's a place in Montana where they actually took, a bunch of different abandoned buildings and put them all like they're trying to do like an Airbnb thing. And so it was like, they're trying to make it like a little boom town. And so they, they transplanted these old abandoned buildings. Hell no. And like all of them are like totally haunted, you know? And, <laughs> and so it's been like sold from one person to the next person. And anyways, this one lady is like, uh, you find out like her backstory is totally like what brought a lot of this stuff there. Um, but, uh, she, she buys it cause she's so attracted to this property. Like she's her, she's attracted to, uh, this dark kind of energy there. And, uh, there's like, it's an old mining town. So there's all these like creepy holes that, that go underneath the town and everything they didn't know about. And, uh, you know, obviously with mining towns, there's cave-ins and a lot of people have died. And so they, they go through like this whole history of uh, the area and like all these murders and all these things. And it's like, it's crazy because she actually like meddled with the occult and all that beforehand and had brought these bones with her, not knowing that like, you know, she's bringing all this like dark magic stuff with her. Wait, she, she's bringing what are the human bones? Yeah. What do you think is going to bring? She was like, oh, I just liked the bones and like, <laughs> okay. I didn't, think this, I didn't think this related to what was going on here. There's all this paranormal activity and crazy stuff. Anyway, I could go on about it, but it's it's very like... Uh, what is this on? Uh, this on Discovery Channel. What's it called? Um, oh, God. I don't remember the name of it, but it's I'll like a, it. some some kind of crazy, like, haunted town that... Um, I love that stuff. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and she... Dude, and it gets even to where she's, like, possessed, and, like, they have to, like, do an exorcism. Dude, it's awesome. Dude, have you have you guys ever played with a Ouija board? Fuck no. Uh, no. Wait, hold dude, on. My Never? friends had... No, no wait, man. Hell I, no. You couldn't pay me to do that now. I did. I know you, you did. did. You told me about that before. Yeah, I, did, I did a few times. Yeah. yeah when I, I was a kid. Yeah, no. That's when why was, you're all fucked up, bro. Uh -huh. That's why you have to do all that therapy. Now you got an attachment. Oh, on oh, you. What a dick. <laughs> what a dick, <laughs> bro. You brought that shit on yourself, bro. Wow. 
I'm going to the wrong like, person. Yeah, wow. Yeah, bro. I should wow. call yeah, you did, call bro. Father Steve. Yeah, Father bro. Steve needs to come. Yeah, Father yeah, Steve bro. was, I spent hella yeah. money on therapy. Yeah. Throw a bunch yeah. of holy water on you, I dude. still, I don't know what's happening. I'm still weird. Yeah. 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 No, He's wow, like, could have been that Ouija fig- board you yeah. played with, kid. Oh. You figured it out, Adam. You got some spirits yeah. inside yeah. you, bro. What See, I would meddle just enough, you know, and then scare, you know, it's kind of fun to get scared, but like, I would never. I'm convinced that Ouija boards, this is, even as a kid, I was convinced. I'm convinced that there's, like, because you're supposed to have like all your hands on it, right? That one of the fucking kids is just yeah, pushing. Somebody's yeah, moving come on, it. bro. The odds that somebody in the group okay. is going to be an asshole is high. That's why it works. I do have to mention yeah. this one guy, all right, so that does the documentary of this thing. Like, so his, like, he started out with the same thing. He was attracted to this property. He's in the why he's attracted to this property. He ends up, like, getting, like, consumed by this dark energy, follows him. He gets really, like, obsessed with, like, occult stuff and, like, wants to learn all these techniques of how to like you know do the ghost hunter tracking devices and he uses recorders he uses lasers and all these things like to try and like show movement and he tries to be all scientific about it but then he pulls stuff out where he's like what the hell are you thinking dude like he he calls it uh, i forget what he called it but it was like this room full of mirrors and he's sitting there trying to like communicate to whatever dark spirit is like are you like psycho like why would you like literally sit there and try your best to like communicate. And then he's like, I got to like deprive myself of sensory, like any kind of input. So he puts like these things over his eyes and like his face and he's just sitting in there. And then like, you know, obviously like f- gets scared and, and cr- like he freaks out. And I'm like, dude, you're just like, he literally is just meddling. It's called the ghost town. Is that the name of it? Uh, is that what that says? Ghost Town Terror? Ghost, Ghost Town Terror, yeah. yeah what made you think it was scary? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's Halloween I'm season. Con- you know, you kind of get into I'm that. Convinced. You guys just decorated. I saw you guys got your stuff up. Are you done or you still got stuff going? Oh, we're just starting, yeah. So we got a lot more to kind of put up. Yeah, I'm in trouble. So you don't think Katrina's all mad at me why? for all that? Because I did like kind of scary stuff and she's like, why did you do that? Oh, because you're inviting But doesn't Max love that? Uh, he, he, he does. He's actually okay with it, although he did have a nightmare after the first day I put it all up. So, I mean, I oh, is it? That's it's like grotesque. Oh, shit. I have like a, I have like too a skeleton, I have a skeleton that opens up and it like says all kinds of evil <laughs> shit. And like, That's yeah, too I, soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. The kid's like, I know, he's so four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's like, didn't you say that what you, you got a big one that flew over? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking oh. about. Yeah, yeah. So I have that one that, I mean, it, it bent the arm and that now the, like the mouth, the mouth used to open and say a bunch of shit. And now he just, says it he does his his mouth how so much was it it was not cheap it was oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. i was pretty upset about that have so. you guys seen this these are old now but i remember when they first came out it was the best halloween decoration I've ever seen in my life it was a mirror and it looked like a regular mirror but it's actually a, like a screen and if you look at it a face pops on it pops up in it and then it all of a sudden comes, comes up to you? The, yes <laughs> The first time I saw that, me. I was like, yeah. "This is t- so." so I bought I, I bought one of the. I, I actually have two holograms that I bought. So I have a hologram for outside that casts like the girl from like the ring. So, oh, she, yeah. so she's casted up on my door, and then uh, I have like these three windows that are that are facing the the main walkway or the street or whatever. And uh, I got a projector that makes the uh, looks like people are like clawing at the window. Or oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I got that. So nice. yeah, I, we went all out this year. Did you see there's a bath mat that you can buy? People have done this for pranks. If you get it wet, it looks like you're bleeding. Ooh. So it looks like blood, but it's water. Oh, so people do this for pranks. They'll put them out and they'll oh, videotape wow. like their partner getting out. And they're like, oh shit, what, what's happening? Yeah. And it looks like blood. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Oh. I might get one of those. It's anyway, funny. so we fun. are going to be getting more uh, chocolate bone broth from paleo valley they uh they sell that out man pretty fast i got us more though did you ask about Good. okay so i saw they they did the whole chocolate donut ad obviously that's from what you said yeah did they admit that that's what i never asked them i should ask them. oh you didn't no. oh i thought for sure you would ask about no, that i'll no, have no. katrina ask and she obviously is the one who works with all the companies but i got them to send us a bunch yeah i i'm really curious about if they saw anything uh, with the ads if they did better because of that mm. uh, because of the ads Mm. So I don't know. I didn't even think to have her do that. Right now we're in the middle of of doing that for next year, right? Negotiating all contracts right now, and I don't think we've got to Paleo Valley yet. So I'll have her. Well, I like with the bone broth that I actually it's the you know with the all the insensitivities that I like. You, know, you mean sensitivities or sensitivity? I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm very insensitive. I'm drinking it every day to now. The sensitivities. <laughs> I'm drinking it almost every day now. See? Oh yeah. No, I'm I, easy to digest. What I yeah, love about I can, it is the handle. the point that I made last time we brought it up is that I. I can add three, four, five scoops. No problem. 
Yeah, and it doesn't feel like oh, it's like water. Yeah, and so I could have a really high protein. So, which is actually really nice because in the past I've always talked about how I like to use protein shakes. I use it at the end of the night. It's the goal is always to not have to use it. The goal is yeah. always to get through Whole Foods. The reality of if I'm not getting four plus meals a day, right. I'm, I'm normally a little lighter, yep. short. And what's cool is that I could literally control the amount of grant. Like before, when I would do that. There's only so much I could push the way, or else I would like it would I, my digestion would be messed up. Fart be, machine. Yeah, it was a mess, right? So I would always have to be at machine. least forty to fifty grams away, and that's otherwise I couldn't push the way any. Oh, I've that. done over a hundred grams of uh, of the. I haven't pushed that far, but I've definitely pushed up to. Like I did a hundred five or six I, scoops. I did a hundred grams in a shake. In a shake, yeah, not through the day. In one shake. Well, Just I've done see. five. I've, what's five? Five is five. That's f uh, what is it? Sixteen? Thir thirteen or sixteen? No, I no, think no. it's thirteen. Thirteen. 13 think. Okay, so that's like 60, 60 grams. Sixty, of protein. seventy grams. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've done that. No yeah. problem. And too. it mixes super easy. Yeah, it's good. you don't even need that much water. Yeah, or, or yeah. whatever you. No, use. no, no. It's good. So I'm, I'm I'm now on it. Right. So it's so funny because you were pushing that for so long. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I'll get around to it. Yeah, I'll get around. I want to ask. I have to. I want to ask you guys something on air. I just got my revolver. I'd love for you guys to get yourselves a handgun so we could go uh, target practice. Yeah, yeah. Because neither one of you, none of you guys have, I know you have a shotgun. You got a shotgun, yeah. I, Doug has a handgun or two. I've been meaning to. I just haven't got around to it. It's but. a process. Is this a headache? No, mm -hmm. listen. It's actually well, easier than you think. We get it sent to really? shop. It's yeah. easier than you think. Go online. Yeah. There's a website, no affiliation, so you don't get mentioned. You can go online. You order it. You find the California legal ones because apparently we Is have- it buds that you use? Thank it? you. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to say Is it. Is it easy for us, Doug? I'll say it. Yeah, I mean, you have to get California legal. Yeah, you can't yeah. get... So anyway, you order... And there's a lot of... There's a, there's stuff you can order. So you get it, and you you select a dealer in the area that they mm -hmm. could ship it to. And I, and there's a lot of them. It's really easy. You wait for them to ship it there. Yeah. Then you go there. You fill out some paperwork. You have to bring two proofs of... Re, uh, two residence, residency proofs. So I think it's like a house... Like, or like a bill. Lease, or, yeah, something yeah. like that, right? And then you have to pass the handgun course to get a, a handgun car is 25 bucks by the way they make that test like it's, almost impossible to fail it's dumb it's like yeah. <laughs> you know when is it a good idea to have your finger on the trigger yeah, yeah. should you always treat a gun like it's loaded like obviously you, yeah, you know, yeah obvious ones um and you do that and then you wait i think it's there's a 10 day or two week waiting period yeah and you go back and pick it up hmm. and then you're set hmm. so i got my i'm a fan now, i've already taken that handgun to, is it how long is it, is it had the two, two years Oh yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been longer than two years yeah, since I yeah, did that. Yeah. But I'm I'm a fan of uh, revolvers, and uh, I've, I, I've always because you can drop to... them in the water; they can do anything. I mean, it's just they're, they're easy to use, they're easy yeah, to load, easy, to, easy load. to handle. I like the way they look; they're cool. I grew up watching movies with revolvers; I think they're fun. So I got myself a 357, which <laughs> a, I always wanted when I was a, a big kid. Cannon. It is, dude. <laughs> that's a big. It cannon. is. It's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good time. I can't wait. Yeah, one of those old west saddles. You. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to talk to Scott. He was setting up a thing for us all to go shooting. So he had every, or he was getting it all set up with some ex marine guy that was going to take Dude, us. Dude, when I was looking fire. up at the calibers, I'm sure, I'm sure some gun, some gun fanatics, I'm, I might get something wrong here. But when I was reading up on like the calibers, I was looking up nine millimeter versus 357. Which ones, you know, whatever. 357 hits harder. Yeah, uh, it's, so it's it's more powerful. The 44 Magnum, which is bigger. Do you know what that was invented for? Large game hunting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pistol. Large game hunting. Pistol, yeah. Yeah. People get that for their home. What are you trying what are you gonna do? Explode <laughs> someone? That's crazy. <laughs> no, I've I actually mean, heard, I don't like know who I heard I heard say bear. this, but I actually heard someone uh recommend like a, just a twenty two for home defense. Not because because you're less likely to kill them, but enough to like deter them from actually doing anything. And, Every I, and, police I, and, and for like like California law and stuff like that, because of how ridiculous it is mm. when it comes to like home protection, you can't just shoot anybody who Look, invades your so house. So every police officer, I used to, when I did jujitsu, I had a lot yeah. of, there were a lot of cops that came in there and asked them this question. This is before, it was when I was so thinking like, about- You always shoot the kill. That's right. They said, uh, you'd rather be, what was it, what they say? You'd rather be judged by however many is a jury than carried by, you know, by 12 or whatever. Right. So in other words, yeah. if you have to Odds pull the are trigger- they're, they're going to fire back. If you have to pull the trigger, then make sure you, you kill them and then deal with the law afterwards was what they told me. Hmm. So they said, yeah, get something. But they recommended a shotgun for shotgun home, home defense. defense. Yeah. That's what they always said. Yeah. yeah. That's so right. this is just for fun, for, ac for target practice. Yeah. No, I'm down. I'm definitely down all for right, all, do it. all of us to do that. All you right. know what? I meant to ask you the other day because you, you've been talking a lot about- um, the trend on homeschooling, and I actually took this screenshot because I was so blown away by the numbers. Have you actually seen 
what the uh the numbers are like as far as like how many people were homeschooling just say like 10 less than 10 years ago oh i'm sure it's exploded yeah dude it's it's well yeah no it's of course it's exploded but i know covid accelerated that it was an it was a number oh man where am i gonna i I knew i just took a screenshot of this and i wanted oh here it is so 1970s uh this has 70s 80s 90s 2000 210 220s okay 1970s how many homeschoolers what percentage? Just what? No, number, total, how many? Oh. 13,000. I have no idea. Okay, 13,000. Yeah, that's nothing. 13,000 homeschoolers. I'll jump all the way to, to then huge trend all the way up to 200,000, then 850,000 homeschoolers by the 90s. By 2000s, 1.5 home, homeschoolers now. You know where it's at? 2020 now? Where? 5 million. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that, a, wow. isn't that crazy? So that's, I'd like to see as that's a, a crazy. Makes, I would like to see it because obviously population population grew. So I'd like yeah, to see but as not a percentage even close to that. No, no, no. I'd like to see as a percentage of kids in school what that looks like. But I know it's. I know after during COVID. Well, I mean, after you, could, you could easily go like this. Yeah. Go to 1970s. What what was the population at 1970, and then look at the population in 2020 and get your number right there. Yeah, of total population. Well, but I mean, I want that's to see still school is, children. Yeah, but it's going to be similar. more accurate. It's be similar. Maybe right. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, we're not. Are we having? We're actually having less. Less kids, yeah, we are than we were. So actually, that it would be it would even, go in our favor. So yeah, in terms it would be of crazy. Yeah, what was the population in 1970 here in, in America? Doug? Let's see here. Um, it was 203 million people, and, and I think it's, it's around like, 330 or 340. Oh God, yeah. So what? A huge increase in huge. percentage, and we are, we're having le- we're having less kids. We're almost double the population, and you're talking about thirteen. This is a crisis for public school. You know that, right? Bro, that's a oh, huge. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It's a crisis I mean, for COVID public school. Put a massive dent. Did you know some countries make in it our faith illegal? In illegal to to homeschool. Did you know in Germany there was a, there was a what? couple? Yes, there was a couple that came to the U.S. to homeschool their kids. They live in Tennessee. Maybe Doug can look them up. German couple. They're going to get what's the what's the term when you get kicked out and get sent back to your home country extradited? Mm-hmm. They're going to uh, get to go to jail for homeschooling their kids. What? Doug, look this up because this this was an article someone sent me. What? I know. That's correct. Because in some countries, it's it's De- a, deported is the word. I think. Deported, yeah. yeah, because it's illegal. What's extradited then? Uh, like a criminal, perhaps that's being well, sent to another country for well, kinda, it, that would be is. extradited, though. Well, it? for so trial just, or something like that. So think about like uh, deported is like an illegal alien. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is they are, well, they're not criminal in the U.S. Well, they're criminal in their other country. Did that's what that's what he's saying. Like, oh, did he say that? Okay, yeah, I that, out. right. That's what you're saying. You're saying that what in their yeah. country it's illegal to homeschool. They came to the U.S. to do it. Yeah, and they got. And, and I so, got to find the article because it was really. They, I mean, it I was really it crazy. Right it's facing deportation. Oh, oh you, you pick okay. you pick it up? Yeah, I did. So read it because this is insane. I can't believe this. Yeah, so a German family who sought asylum for homeschooling faces deportation after 15 years in the U.S. Wow. Yep. And, and to homeschool. Like, that's nuts. Dude. Isn't that crazy? Just, just that's them, a lot That's a lot of countries. Them be, How many man. countries it's illegal? Of course, because if you homeschool, it bankrupts their system. Yep. It's also let's let's be let's be honest, potentially, okay, so everybody relax. Mm-hmm. Potentially, if you want State indoctrination. Yes. It's the most effective form. Of course. Well, that's always a factor. Potentially, everybody. It's a factor. It's Calm fun. down. Calm down. All right. We got a shout out. We right? always, we always. by the way, every time we talk about this stuff, I I, I don't know if you guys get that. I, I always have the, the, the emails of teachers. Going nuts. So, oh, yes. Dude. I have a lot of teachers in my family. Oh, so, God. Right. so do I. That's why my mom is. Same. My best friend God, is. My best my friend's wife is. is. I got a lot yeah. of teachers in my family at public schools, by yeah, the way. Same. And, I, and the thing that, and I should say this since that we brought this up, because- you, you know what I say about, about trainers in our industry? There's a lot of shitty trainers. Yeah. It's a fact. Yeah. Our industry has done a shitty job. It's a yeah. fact. Yeah. Like, so it's, sorry, the, the school as a whole, it doesn't- We're trying to repair our image. And by the way, that doesn't mean I think that every teacher is bad or every school is bad. I 100% believe there's there's incredible teachers out there that are that are doing the best they can in public schools that are impacting lots of kids' lives. But as a whole- we're failing. Bro, go that to, industry is failing our kids the same way the fitness industry is failing our population. Do you know what's, at, you know what's frustrating when you go to like parent teacher conferences? And, and there's obvious there's obvious stuff like your kids doing this, your kids talking, whatever, fine. But then if you ever hear this, this is the most frustrating thing I'll ever hear in my entire life from a, a teacher. Your child, um, they do their work, you know, they get the A or whatever, but 
you know, they could definitely go above and beyond. And I want to reply to them and be like, your fucking job is inspire them. <laughs> yeah. They're going to do what you tell them, which is do this to get the grade, Correct. which is what anybody, well, that's that makes sense, that's logical. If you want them to go above and beyond to be inspired, that's what your job is. Yeah. Inspire them to do so. Right? right. If I had, that's I always took responsibility for my clients. Like it's yeah. my job. You have I'm, to have passion. Yeah. To, to pull that off. Yeah, dude. Because kids are bored, man. They're bored. In some class. teachers do have that. So they do. You know, there's some. Well, in their defense, though, too, they're also confined to this structure. Totally. That they have to do it with. And you got thirty. Like kids. imagine, imagine this. Imagine being trainers. And being told to be the best trainer you could be, but, Here's you, your ha curriculum. but you have to teach. Yeah. You have to teach Orange Theory. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have to <laughs> you have to teach this way, and you have to follow. Uh, you have to follow carnivore diet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like you imagine being given parameters, and and then being course, told yeah. go out there and change lives. Like so, in their defense, the like you know, they don't get a lot of autonomy when it comes You're to right. how they want to teach these kids or what they would by focus the, on, and that's really unfortunate. I have friends that do a lot of homeschooling; they're very good at it. You know how much time their kids spend homeschooling during the day. Not very much. An hour? Yeah. Two. And you know yeah, what they tell say, me? First two hours is where they get all their, their work you, done. You know what they tell me? I don't know how, what, what kids are doing in school all day long. Like, Nothing. They're not and, doing anything. And their kids score crazy high Bro. and do really well. I get, yeah. So yeah, yeah, anyway, I, I get angry uh, let's like do that. the uh, the the shout out. You had you had um, oh, Coleman yeah. Hughes, right? Yeah, Coleman Hughes. I, I, heard, I found him on the All In podcast. They actually interviewed him. He had a, a really good TED Talk. It's about 13 minutes long, but so worth a watch, especially in today's climate. I think it's a, a super valuable one for everybody to watch and was really, really good. And there was some controversy around it. Which is weird. Yeah. Where, I don't think it's controversial at yeah, all. Yeah. And if you want to know about the controversy, you can, you can go to All In Podcast, watch their interview with Coleman Hughes because they, they get into but the, all the, of it. The, the video that he did, the talk is called The Case for uh, A Case for Colorblindness. Yes. Mm -hmm. really worth good. the watch. TED Talk, Great about 13 video. minutes long. Excellent watch. Check it out. All right, there's a company called NutraSense, which combines the science and technology of continual glucose monitors that measure your glucose in real time, so you can tie it to foods and how they affect you, with nutrition coaches on the other end. In other words, these people will work with you and your physiology to maximize your diet. This is the most effective way to get lean and stay lean. It's about as individualized as a diet can get. It is a groundbreaking company. Go check them out and get yourself $30 off. Go to Nutrisense.io. That's N-U-T-R-I Sense.io forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get that discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Angus from Australia. Angus, what's happening? G'day, guys. How you going? Good. Good. What's happening? Not much. Um, just here very early in the morning, 3.30. Um just wanted to get up and send you guys a question. Um, you have to excuse me. I'm pretty nervous. Feel a bit of a bit starstruck. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Don't worry. Justin's nervous too. Yeah. This yeah. isn't real anyway. It's all AI. <laughs> they sweat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, guys, basically my question. So, um, I train with very minimalist, minimalist routine. Um, pretty much your big five. I add in uh, dips and uh, pull-ups as well um, to that. But I know that in the long term, you guys talk about how that can cause joint issues, and I definitely do start to feel that sometimes. Um, so I was wondering if there's like two or three must-do rotational um, or lateral movements that you guys would include um, for someone who does like to keep it very simple. Um, but also wants to get the benefits of those other movements. Yeah, that's a good question. How um, really do you question. do you play any sport or do you do anything aside from the training? <laughs> yeah, so I'm 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 in the army at the moment. Um, we do a lot of different stuff, um, and it's been quite hard on my body going from doing one thing, which was the way I like to train, to a lot of random stuff. Um, so, and there's been like a bit of adjustment issues in my body as well. Like even doing, um, you know, the weight loaded marching and, um, all that kind of stuff where my body just hasn't been used to it. Um, but I suppose the, the army does a lot of those, uh, a lot of those different random things that I'm asking my body to do, uh, 
are helping, but just I want to be able to replicate that in the gym as well in order to uh, help support those those skill sets. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So th- here's the issue with avoiding um, certain fundamental movements, and it doesn't necessarily – the reason why I asked you if you play any sport or do anything else – is it doesn't necessarily have to be strength training. Um, if it's complemented by other movements outside of the gym, uh, where you're, you know, doing movements like running laterally and rotating because you're playing sports, um, then you're probably going to be okay. But here's here's the issue. The issue is that when your body gets really strong in one uh, plane of movement, you create an imbalance between one way of moving and another way of moving. There, there's a ratio that seems to be ideal <clears throat> in terms of strength and stability with uh, movements that support other movements. Okay. So think of like a, a race car. You can have a race car with a lot of horsepower, but if the frame doesn't support the horse fa- power, now the frame becomes a hindrance and you can start to damage the car. It wouldn't be an, I- an issue though, if the car wasn't too strong for the frame. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's really about, it really has to do a lot with balance. Okay. So now to answer your question, if you want to find exercises that are kind of must, you know, you know, go to's, I like lateral sled, sled drags. If you don't have a sled, you could do um, lateral lunges, two blocking, anything with resistance moving sideways would be just fine. And then for rotation, you know, uh, band chops, cable yeah. chops, throwing a medicine ball. This is where core exercises. Windmills. Really windmills, I'd love to see. Windmills would be amazing. Yeah, those are all those are all totally fine. But let's say, how often do you do strength training? Every day. Okay, so wow, every single day. And then how often do you do exercise with uh, the your military? Um, we usually do three sessions a week. The intensity varies. We usually have... Uh, we usually have like a cardio day, a strength day, and then a weight loaded march day, which is kind of a combination of the two, I suppose. Okay. Um, but my sessions, my sessions are short. So I do in the morning, like I do, I'll do two lifts, um, pretty much when I go in, I just like to have that, um, routine and because we, our schedule here is so demanding. We are only really out of time to get in the gym for 15 minutes. So I do kind of like a maps 15 okay. kind oh, yeah. of thing. That yeah. works. So another option, it would be for us to give you maps performance and you follow, you use the, you, so you, you follow the kind of maps 15 protocol you're doing. Cause I don't want to change that. It sounds like that works well with your schedule. I also think that's a good amount of volume for all the other things you're doing. So I wouldn't change choosing two exercises. I'd like that, but maybe pull from maps performance. Because that, there's a lot of exercises in there that are unilateral, there's some lot- rotational movements in there. There's some movements that are going to incorporate the things that you're looking for, and you could just you could still kind of follow your concept. I'm I, I'm a fan of what you're doing. I like that of going in there and doing two good movements. Um, but you can use that program to pull that from. It also has uh, mobility days in there. So let's say it's a, and you said the, the intensity varies with like your training. So let's say it's a really heavy intensity day or week for you. And maybe instead of training five or six days of lifting heavy that week, you take one of those days and do some mobility movements that would really complement kind of what you're doing right now and still give you this kind of structure that you currently have. That would be my suggestion. Yeah. And I also think too, like if you're doing just regular, uh, overhead pressing or you're doing rows, you can always add that element of rotation there for the shoulders. Um, and I like to do that with kettlebells or, uh, with dumbbells. <clears throat> so you can actually kind of incorporate that as, a, as another way to add rotation within your pressing and pulling. Um, and then like core for, for the most part, you're going to be able to get, uh, whether like Sal mentioned, like side chops or, um, any kind of like landmine rotational movement um, for that. Or you windmill. Can, yeah, windmill is, is probably going to cover all the bases for that. So, um, you know, that's that's just an easy way to like, oh, if I need one exercise specifically to kind of cover uh, my my different uh, like tran- transverse plane, it would be like windmill or, uh, yeah, one of those core exercises. I like that. So look at you just, so the, the three areas I'm really concerned about, right? Rotational stuff for your, your core, your shoulders, uh, because of, uh, the, the joint and then also the hips, right? So if there's three movements I would want to make sure, or there's three movements in there that I want to do shoulders, 
I like a like an Arnold press right. or like a kettlebell press, like uh, like Justin is saying. That would take care of the shoulders. A windmill would take care of like your your core, and then doing something laterally, like a either a sled drag laterally or doing two blocks Cossacks laterally. Lunge, Cossack lunge, like so. Pick one of those, and then you're really hitting it up pretty good. Like if you do that and incorporate those three movements with what you're kind of already doing. I think you'd be in a really good position. Now, to be fair, Angus, your joint pain might have nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, what, what do you What do you feel? What kind of joint pain are you having? Um, they kind of just tend to come and go, and it's it's. I think it might just be to do with over like the intensity of what I'm doing here. Like, so I, I recognize that as well. Um, it usually what will happen is. I'll just do something that I've never done before and then I'll get um, like, then it'll get pain and it just will not, it'll just stick around, stick around, stick around. Um, so it could be just that I need to put my body into more different um, planes of movement. That's what I thought more regularly and just get my body more comfortable with those things. Um, but yeah, it could just be that. Is what it a, is, is, is it a particular joint or area? Like, is yeah. it normally hip? Is it normally shoulder? Is it normally elbow? Is it normally knee? Yeah, where's the big common the Where yeah, where is it normally? The the ankles, ankles, shoulders. Um, He's all knee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think doing more is the necessarily the solution. It might be replacing a few yeah, movements. That's yeah. exactly what I do. Or, I take or your, doing less. Take your protocol. Just replace it with the movements that we're saying yeah. in there. Yep. Yeah, and I I think probably has more to do with the military training. Yeah, you do it every day, right? So I don't. Yeah, so I, I again to be fair, I don't think it's a lack of doing. You know, like you need to do more. You might need to change a few things. Maybe add some re, re, you know mobility uh, and replace of certain strength training exercises. Maybe add a day off. Might be exactly what you what your body needs. So we gave you some options. What I don't want you to do. Here's what a lot of people do is just throw it on top of what they're yeah. already doing, yeah. which might not be, and I don't, to be honest, I mean, my opinion, I don't think that's going to, I think that might make things worse, to be honest with you. Look, I like, I like where I was going with the performance. So I'm going to have Doug send you maps performance. There's things in there like the, uh, the matrix lunge. Do we have caustic squats in that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Caustic squats are in there. So what I want you to do is follow your protocol of like your two extra, I like the two exercises a day, but instead of doing traditional barbell back squats on that day, trade them out for caustic squats that day. Mm -hmm. And then instead of doing a, a, a barbell overhead press one day, yeah, do, do, do an Arnold press yeah. that day. And like, so remove some of these traditional lifts with some of these uh, exercises that incorporate a rotational. And then if you start to feel like your joints are getting inflamed or you, or if even better, you know, it was an intense day at, in the military, follow that up with like a mobility day instead of actually doing strength training. So become aware of, okay, that was a pretty intense day I did, and I trained really hard the day before that. You know what? Today, when I go to the gym, instead of doing my two lifts, I'm going to pull from MAPS performance and do some of the mobility exercises. That's going to do you really well. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. Really nice to meet you. All right, you too, All Angus. Right, man. Go Good back luck. to bed. Good luck. Yeah, go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It, you got it. it. Yeah, the thing about joint pain uh, is it, it could be lack of exercise. It could be too much exercise. Right, right, it could yeah. be diet. It could be lack of sleep. Uh, inflammation and pain um, can come from so many different areas. Yeah, and so, yeah, the wrong the wrong solution can often will, will often make things a lot worse. So I asked him, um, you know, where he felt the pain and what was going on, and and if he was because if you do sports and you add strength training, uh, you know, not all sports, right? Some sports are super linear, like you're cycling or running. But um, if you're doing a, a, a sport that's dynamic, yeah, soccer, you're going to cover all the bases yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, for the most part, rotating. you know? Yeah. So you're going to be okay with the stuff that we talk about. Like when we talk about lack of lateral movement or rotation, we're usually addressing people who only strength train and they yeah. really don't do anything else. Maybe some like traditional cardio, they don't do anything else. And then the imbalances start to happen. But if you're doing all that other stuff, you're probably going to be okay. You're yeah, if fine. I had to guess, I actually think this is just a little bit of overusage. I mean, I think he did the right thing by, I, lo I love the MAP15 type of yeah. protocol, two exercises. Yeah. I think that the problem is, though, he's just doing everything in the sagittal plane. He's not in corpus. So I think his his mindset is in the right place. The, the prescription, though, is don't 
add it on top of what you're already doing. Yeah, yeah, replace replace it with some of the things you were already doing. And then in addition to that, also become aware of, okay, that was a pretty intense week in the military. I should probably scale back. Instead of doing any strength training today, I'm going to do some mobility work. That will serve him really well. Our next caller is Carly from Utah. Hi, Carly. How can we help you? Oh my gosh. I'm fangirling a little bit right now, you guys. <laughs> and just thank you for everything you guys do. Everything you preach really resonates with me. I love that you guys never preach extremes and that you actually bring in the spiritual side of it. I love that. So thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank right you. On. Okay. So I'll go ahead and just read it, paraphrase a little bit. Um, so 28 year old ex collegiate athlete, high school um, teacher right now, online coach and mom. I've been weight training consistently for 10 years now, and I initially started seeing the most progress as far as strength and hypertrophy when I started isolating my muscle groups with my weekly workout split. For example, push, lower, pull, core, and full. I've continued this split for about four years now. I like the way I look and I feel really strong. And then I give you my numbers there for reference. Um, but I do feel like I've never been able to reach that next level as far as my physique goes. I've tracked my macros for five years and I feel like I have a very healthy balance and relationship with food. So on one of your recent episodes, you guys mentioned that for a majority of people training full body three times a week will yield the best results. Like about three times a week, you said, I feel this will benefit me in the future when I hopefully have another baby and my time might be even more limited than it is now. My question is, what is the best way to program these full body workouts? Are sets focusing on one muscle group more effective or should I implement um, more full body or compound movements? Are the workouts typically longer because you're working more muscle groups? So I work out before work every day. So I have about an hour to work with. Well, let's back up for a second because I'll get to that. And, and that's a good question. But let's back up for a second. What do you mean by next level? Um. Well, I mean, just like... I am not shredded and I don't have any goals to be shredded. I'm not like competing in anything. Um, I just, I kind of would like to, you know, when I go on trips with my family and I, and I feel confident in a bikini or whatever, but I'd like for them to know like, Oh dang, you're strong or you look like, you know, you're, yeah. You can lift a lot of weight, well, you know. I saw you your look, numbers. You look strong and fit, right? Yeah, I can see your shoulders. <laughs> just you're, you're, just okay, so you know. Your you're, you're lift, what you have? Two reps, 135 in the bench, 245 in the squat. That's impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah you're, you're you're pulling over, you know, 200 pounds off the floor. What's your body weight? Um, So right now I'm about 124. I don't track that a lot. Okay. Yeah, so I got some, I got to give you some news. I don't know if this is uh <laughs> this might be shocking to you, but your next level. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you're yeah, already yeah. there. Yeah. That's pretty I damn good. That. Like yeah. strength. I will admit like strength is, um, my, my thing. Like I know I am strong. I can do like, it was funny. My husband, when we were back dating, he was like, Oh my gosh, you can do pull-ups. And we joked that that's like one of the reasons he like started dating me. So I know I'm strong. I just feel like, okay, could I take my physique to maybe a little bit more of a next level where I look more defined or something like that, doing full body workouts instead of the current split that I'm doing right now? Okay, yeah, so yeah, that's, it's going to be more diet, just so you yeah, know. That's yeah, true. definition is, especially if you're already lean and fit, that's typically the the result of, of nutrition. And if you're already lean, to get even leaner, so I don't know what your body fat percentage is. I can't. I tell it. I'm, I'm have, guessing it's pretty low. If she's 124, she's pushing that kind of weight. You're pretty lean already. I can tell you that, right? With just knowing that. Do you have an idea of what your body fat percentage is at, Carly? I would guess um, because back when I was at a gym where they do the little scans or whatever, and based on where <laughs> I, what I look like right now, I would guess I'm somewhere around 2021. You're Jack. Yeah, she's uh, Jack, dude. Yeah. You're so, Jack. Yeah. To get any leaner, it's yeah. like a crazy it. six pack. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so to, to get any leaner, it, to go from where you're at now, which is incredible. Yeah. And, no, I mean, you got abs. Yeah. And to go to the next level, this is when things get weird with diet. It, this, this is when it's like super ridiculous, consistent all yeah. the time, every single time. And, and that's just, you know, to go from where you're at now to get even leaner. That's just gonna gonna be what it requires. As far as workouts are concerned, you know, when we say full body three days a week is best for most people, we're talking about, you know, most people. Now you are so consistent, you've been trained so long. I still think you would benefit from switching because of the novelty of the new routine. It's different than what you've been doing for the last four years. 
I don't think any routine is always going to be the best one for you all the time. Yeah. I think uh, a routine when you change, as long as it's appropriate, so that's the context, okay? <clears throat> as long as the routine is appropriate, you're not overtraining, overdoing it, you're training your body um, within its parameters, you're not, you know, going too crazy in either direction. Anytime, you're, you don't want to change your workout every three to six months. You're just going to want to change the programming. Whether it's the rep ranges or the split, I like full body splits. I think one exercise per body part, maybe two for a couple body parts that you really want to focus on. Typically, they're compound lifts. You're training at moderate to high intensity. You're not training to failure. You usually, when people switch to that from what you're doing now, they'll just see big strength gains and they'll mm -hmm. see more muscle. But definition, that's going to be a problem. I mean, I'm looking. I was looking at your pictures. Doug pulled your your Instagram. It's it's going to be that's going to be your diet, and yep. it looks like you have a good diet now based off of the way you look. Yeah, it's just going to be literally like the difference between like when I when I when I would get down to ten percent body fat, if I wanted to get any leaner, then every meal had to be perfect. It's like I couldn't have one that was off, otherwise I'd stay at ten percent, right? So most people wouldn't be able to get to where you're at because it requires so much discipline to go any further. It's going to, and you might not want to do this. You might be like, ah, that's not worth it. No, you're crossing over to unhealthy. Yeah. You're already like peak healthy. I can tell, I can tell by your numbers. I can tell by the way you look right now, your skin and hair. I can tell by your pictures on Instagram and you're not just like one picture you were fit. And then you have a bunch of other stuff. Like it, we Doug scrolled down and looked like for like a year you maintain a very fit, healthy physique. Now, it's not up to me to tell you that you can't go be a bikini looking athlete for a week or whatever like that because you want to. Like, I'm not against if you hired me and said, Hey, Adam, and I can tell you how the discipline, I want to get in bikini shape to like compete for a show, then we could do that. But I'll tell you right now, you would cross into unhealthy to get there because you're already, in my opinion, as lean as you really want to be as a female. You got abs, you're strong, you got definition, like you look incredible. So I think that's important to know that it, whatever we go from here, we're going to cross into what's not ideal. So even in your head, you may want to prove to yourself, which that's fine too. Like I get it. I did it. Like I know. And it was about proving that I could do that, but I don't maintain that. Like there's, I mean, that's just ridiculous to maintain that. So where do you, you said you track your macros for five years. Where are you at? Like uh calorie wise, obviously I'm assuming you hit protein and take and stuff like that. Where are you at calorie wise and movement too? Like, do you track steps? I do. I do track steps. I get about 12,000 every single day. Um, right now I'm currently in the process of trying to move past the mental block of like getting over 2000 calories. So I'd say I'm consistently around 1900 right now. And, and that's the thing too, especially where in the next year or so, my husband and I'll be trying to get pregnant again. Like I am in no, no. way wanting to cut down because I mean, I know I went through infertility too. So yeah. Yeah. that's not a goal of mine more. So the goal is like, okay, once I have a second baby and maybe I only make it to the gym three times a week versus the five that I'm going right now. Like what should those workouts look like? Okay. I mean, maps anabolic yeah. would be great for you. And yep. then, and then you could eat. So I'm going to give you two programs. I'm going to give you maps and anabolic, And then I like advanced maps and anabolic for you because of how advanced you are. Uh, that's later. Yeah. Later. That's first maps anabolic. Um, and then you could progress to the advanced maps anabolic after that. Cause I think you'll, I think you will, you know, I w before you mentioned you were going to have, I was going to say, um, I was going to talk about fertility with you because you're at the borderline. Right yeah. Now. I think if you got any leaner, you probably lose your period. Yes. I, I, she's already so lean. My advice to you, if you know, even though you didn't ask for this advice would be to do a reverse <laughs> diet. Yeah. I like that. If you're walking around at 1900 calories at yeah. your strength, your muscle mass, your leanness, you, what you, what's happening right now is you're playing this game of like, you're, you're, you're at the line, you're, you're balancing the line constantly, which means any extra stress, any extra potential overtraining, any loss of sleep is going to tip you over into an unhealthy place. I think what you should probably do, what I would do is I'll put you in a bulk. Yeah. I would reverse diet you get real fertile. You're just going to get stronger. I don't even think you're going to gain body fat. And if you do, it's okay. I, I mean, based off your pictures, I'd say you're around 19 percent or so or less maybe yeah and i'd reverse diet you i don't i don't think it'd be i don't i wouldn't cut you from 1900 
based no, off of what you're showing. Definitely not. Definitely no. not. I, I love that advice. I 100% agree with that. I would I would tell you, we, we might get a little bit soft, but not bad. Like you're going to put a little bit of weight, good weight for most of the most of part, but you're going to increase calories. So anticipate a little bit of more water weight, a little bit of more weight. on. So don't freak out if you go up a little bit on the scale. But the goal should be more so, can I get up to somewhere like 2,500 to yeah. 2,600 calories? Yep. Like that, your goal should be slowly try and go up 100 to 200 calories at a time. Stay there till you feel comfortable, like you're not adding any more weight. You should hopefully feel stronger. You're staying plateaued, maybe say for a week, then bump up another 100 to 200 calories and just keep playing that game until you get up to about 25, 2600. And then if you really want to just play around for a while, you could cut back down to the 2000 and see how your body changes and leans out. But if we're talking about fertility and being healthy, I definitely would rather you be even higher up as far as your body fat percentage. You're going to be in a healthier place, especially to get pregnant. Yeah, so. based off what you said too, you said you, you did you did have to deal with some fertility stuff. Um, I would guess you're already on the line right now. I would guess that you're 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 close to to getting into negatively affecting fertility. So I, I would not I would not cut. So you know. I, I I recommended Maps Anabolic. You you run like a split right now, right? So that's probably enough. I would say uh, that doing that in conjunction with also increasing your calories, it's going to be a new enough stimulus for you mm -hmm. and, and unique yep. you that build you're, muscle. you're going to build muscle from it. So follow it to a T, trust the process. Okay. Um, on the days that you're used to lifting, you can go walk, you know, go do some, or go, go for a nice little hike, you know, don't try and add a bunch of other stuff. Just do follow the program. It's laid out. And then uh, stay with us. I'd, I, I want to hear how you are in like, you know, a month or two and see how things are going. But the goal should be get up to about 25, 2600 calories. And by the way, we're like being very nitpicky with you because I think you're in an amazing place right now because 1900 calories is not low for 120. That's a good, good amount. You're strong. So you're in You a, could really get away with more. Yeah. Are you, uh, I mean, who are you comp comparing yourself with? Because I, I feel like you're, you know, your ideals are just, are you looking at social media? Are you looking at like insane people? <laughs> um, I mean, do you have a friend that's as strong as fit as you are? Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but you know, I was a female athlete and I had other really athletic teammates. So maybe I am comparing a little bit to yeah. social media. I would, I've always had a good physique and like, I think my fear is losing that physique. It's kind of, you know, that's why I have this mental barrier of pushing past 2000 calories. Mm, yeah. Um, so maybe it, that's kind of the fear is seeing myself in the mirror being a little more soft, you know, yeah. you, well, know what's, so, yeah. you know, what's not going to happen if you go up two or 300 calories, <laughs> you're not going to gain a ton of weight no, from that. No, no. Yeah. You're just going to feel stronger. And honestly, Carl, you said that you, you it's appreciate the mental, the, the mental spiritual stuff that we talk about. I think for those reasons, this would be a very healthy exercise yeah. for you. Forget all the other stuff. Like the fact that you admit that there is a mental block and barrier there. I can, all of us are telling That's you, the growth is you're going to sure. be fine. This would be a healthy thing for you to do is to push yourself mentally. Know that you're an athlete. Know that you could turn around and go right back the other direction if you need to. Mm -hmm. But hey, the goal should be allow yourself that little bit of freedom, even to put on a few pounds or even to look a little softer. It's okay. You are, you are literally two weeks away from being lean and shredded again. So like- I think that would be a good exercise for you is to really try and add those calories in. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Question, follow-up question to that then. Would like my 120 to 130 grams of protein be sufficient? Yeah. Yep. Still? Plenty. Yeah, you're fine. Yep. I mean, okay. if you want to add protein to bump your calories, you could do that too, but that that's, you're totally fine. I, I mean, I would add carbs and fats, what I would do. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Keep right. us posted. I'd like to hear where you're at in 30 days. Hey, awesome. All right, well, Carl. thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. You All got right, it. All right, thank Carly. you. Her own I, worst I, enemy. I knew she was jacked. I could tell. Well, yeah, <laughs> you can like, see in her like, face and her shoulders. And then when she said oh, her yeah. numbers, 120, 100, only 120 something pounds. And she's, I mean, she's uh, Katrina strong. Katrina's got 25, 30 pounds on her. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, you're you're definitely way fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say, you know, it's like the whole, when she said next level, I'm like, what does that mean to you? And, you know, <laughs> even before she said anything with fertility, like, you know, women, especially men, this happens to men too, but we don't have obvious signs. It's like losing our period, right? We don't obviously have a period, but with women, if you, you, you can maintain a relatively lean physique, but if you push it for too long, you're fertility, you're, you lose your period. And that's not a good sign. It's a very strong sign. Yeah. 
that you're you're going in the wrong direction. And you don't even tell you don't even have to lose your period. And you still, I mean, Katrina, we had fertility issues, and from Katrina being too lean, and we, she didn't lose her period. Yeah, but she just the doctor was like, yeah, you're you need you to put some, eat more. Yeah, you got to put some body fat percentage on. We need to get a higher body fat percentage. So. Yeah, if that especially if that's the goal. But I mean, she's in she's in incredible shape and in a great place uh, right now. And I think a good exercise for her is to would be to allow herself to get a little bit softer. It's okay. Mm. She's already in an elite place. Our next caller is Carrie from the UK. Hi, Carrie. How can we help you? Hi. Oh. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. You got right. it. How can we help you? Um. Well, firstly, the customary thank you so much for all your content. Um, I've been listening for a while, so I know that's that's what I've got to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you'd have told me five years ago that three big guys talking about muscle building would have been the soundtrack to my days, I'd have thought you'd have lost the plot. <laughs> but here we are, and thanks a million. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I'm 43. Um, I'm five foot one, and I hover around 112 pounds. And like so many of your listeners, I've always worked out – uh, with cardio to manually burn the calories. Uh, and then in April 2021, I found lifting and have been trusting the process ever since. I'm consistently in the gym three days a week doing full body. I bought MAPS Anabolic November last year, uh, and I'm just about to start it for the third time. I've been in the same weight range for forever, and my progress seems slow. Uh, my issue is I carry a lot of fat. Well, not a lot, but when I do carry fat, it goes to my trunk. So I'm an apple on my face. Um, I would love to build my legs more. My arms are defined, but my legs are like twigs, strong twigs, but twigs. <laughs> um, I think this is maybe because I have trouble collecting to my connecting to my glutes, but essentially I don't know. After I ran anabolic for the first time, I came up with my own routine um, and focused on lower body. But then I listened to one of your podcasts and it said that I shouldn't uh, work a muscle more than 16 sets in a week. And I was going way over that. So I binned off my ideas and swiftly ran back to, to, to the safety of anabolic. My goal is to build as much muscle as possible before hitting the inevitable menopause. I'm not there yet. And I feel great. I feel better than I did when I was in my twenties. Um, I wasn't very healthy in my 20s, but I still feel better than I did when I was in my 20s. I want to be able to say to myself that I'm in great shape, be strong for years to come, and more importantly, set an example for my boys for as long as I possibly can. They're four years old and six years old. Lifting has helped me through so many things mentally. I could not imagine my life without it, not just doing it, but learning about it too. So my question is, can I adapt um, MAPS Anabolic to be more lower body focused? How do I do it correctly so as not to overtrain? I've currently swapped squats for hip thrusts after listening to a few of your podcasts over the summer, um, but I feel like I should be swapping more out. Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. um, and you're strong. Yeah. I'm looking at the weights you're lifting. You yeah. weigh 112 pounds and you're squatting uh, you're, you're, 62 kilograms yeah, for three reps. You're doing great right now. That's excellent. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. And, and, and your, you said your body weight is staying the same, but you're getting stronger. Well, I don't know. I am getting stronger. It's slow. Like I look today at, at compared um, from December last year, I've only gone up five pounds in my squat, five pounds in my deadlift. Um, my bench has stayed the same, although my form on, uh, is better. Um, I don't know whether that's good progress or not. I, d I didn't. Well, you know. you're strong. It's not bad progress, especially if your technique and stability feel better. So if, if so, and we'll get to, I'm going to get to more of your question, but let's say somebody does a squat with a hundred pounds and then, you know, a, a month from now, they do the same squat with the same weight, but they feel tighter, more solid. Better form. Maybe even better technique, a little bit ra deeper range of motion. They're stronger. Even though the weight the same, the weight is the same, they've still uh, gotten stronger. So now you can modify MAPS anabolic a little bit more. So here's what we typically will, will do is we'll take sets away from other exercises and add them to movements and exercises that you want to prioritize. But before I, I get into that, do you feel good? Do your joints feel good? Do you feel rested? 
Uh, are you extra sore? Do you have any signs of overtraining? Like, like, tell me about how everything feels to you. I rarely get sore. The only time I get like a, a nice sore is when I change it up. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my, my sleep is good. Um, I think I'm consistent with my protein. I used to track, but I, I found that I was kind of, uh, if you hit your macros, if it fits your macros or whatever. Yeah. So I kind of stepped away from that uh, a couple of months ago and I have put on a few pounds from it, but I, I, I'm i not letting it control me. Rather, I'm just going with how I feel. I want to I wanna know how I feel about food rather than it fitting into a, a chart kind of thing. How, yeah. how, how consistent are you with making sure you hit your protein intake? And do you know where your calories land? I know you're not really following the macro thing anymore, but do you have an idea of what, how many calories you consume and then what your protein intake is consistently? Yeah, um, I maintain probably, uh, you're going to say it's not enough. I maintain at 1,500 probably. Um, and protein, I aim for 100. Okay, so, I, okay. I get, so, I get, consistently, I get 90 to 100. So here's our opportunity. And this is probably why you've had good success and strength gaining is like, I think you can totally increase calories. And you won't and, gain any body fat and you're not, you're just going to get stronger. Yeah. That's what they're, I think you would have got even stronger. I think you did great by the way. Okay. I think we're doing Oops. phenomenal, but that feeling of like, you know, it's kind of slow. Could it have been a little bit faster? I bet if you were in more of a calorie surplus, it would have been faster. So if yeah. you would have had your calories up, say two, 300 more calories than when you're at consistently hitting a hundred plus grams of protein every day, I think you would have seen even more strength gains than you already got. All in all, I think we're doing phenomenal. I think just switch, switching up some exercises, bumping calories a little bit, and you're going to see great results. Yeah, so here's an easy way to do it, Carrie, if you are if you don't want to track and get too caught up in the macros. Because I get that. Some people will do that, and then it starts to feel stressful or whatever, and, and, and they don't enjoy it. You probably yeah. generally eat the same types of foods most days. I, I bet if we looked at breakfast, lunch, and dinner – it's very similar. Literally, you could just, all you got to do is eat what you're currently eating and add an extra 200 calorie meal. So just take a 200 calorie meal, make it a high protein one, and then add that to your current diet. And that would be enough to start to get the ball moving in the right direction. Or or this, Sal, would, I mean, since you're eating the same thing without even adding another meal is every time you eat meat, add one to two ounces. Yeah, yeah there you so, go. That's oh, the other thing. So if you normally eat a six ounce, you know, six ounces of chicken thighs or beef or steak or fish or whatever it is, instead of having six, have eight. Yeah. Just, that's, okay. Just, yep. just, just, just add, increase your portion size of the meat that you're eating and yeah. that'll do, that'll do the job. Like literally by one or two ounces. That's it. If you always eat six, eat eight. That's and, and that's a that's a low enough amount of calories. You're not going to see a major weight gain from it. You're and you're then you're also going to make sure you probably hit your protein at a, over 100 every time, and it'll be a nice low calorie boost. That's it. And then as far as your training is concerned, because you feel so good, uh, Carrie, you could literally do this. You could add to your Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout. You could add one or two sets to some lower body exercises that you're currently doing. I think you'd be okay just adding a little bit. So. When you do your squats or your hip thrusts or your deadlifts, let's say yeah. you normally do three sets, do four or five. I think that would oh, be en- okay. I think that'd be enough. I don't think you would it would overtrain you, but in combination with the sl- slight calorie bump, that would probably be a nice combination to get your lower body start to develop a little more. I love the idea of just adding two sets of hip thrusts into the, following the anabolic routine and and then just adding two or three sets of the yeah. uh, hip thrusts in there because yeah. that's a that's not going to do as much damage because it's not a big you know squat compound lift. It's e- it's a pretty good and you also mentioned the point about thinking yeah. that maybe you have a poor connection to your glutes. Issue, yeah. That's going to support that. It's going to give you a little bit more volume in the lower body. So I would literally just add two or three sets uh, of the the uh, hip thrust one or two times a week, and that'd be perfect. Yeah. So just like whatever you're doing, add a, another set or two because it sounds like you're already doing those, right? Yeah. So at the moment, I kind of I took squats out yeah, because I listened in. to one of your episodes about poor connections and put in hip thrust. Should I put squats back in there? Well, then? How, how long you been done? Uh, how long have you stopped the squats? Um, I've only just. Uh, I'm in phase one again yeah phase one of anabolic um so i did pre-phase i did squats i think it's in pre-phase yeah um 
but I've only been doing it a couple of weeks. I'm only on week two of pre-phase, pre-phase so I can... Uh, yeah, I, you know, maybe a, maybe a couple more weeks and then throw a couple sets of squats in. You'll be fine. Yeah, so it's like you're at your base. Okay, so essentially what you're doing, Carrie, is you're adding a little bit of volume to your lower body, an extra couple sets for lower body, and you're bumping your calories by about 200. And that should, you start, you should start to see within a, a couple weeks, you should start to see progress in the positive. Yeah. Okay. And you don't think, uh, cause I'm quite petite. You don't think two, 300 no. calories is too No, good. not no. a, not a no. 1500 calories. No, no. And not the way you're lifting and how strong no. you like, it's going to serve you well. You know, what's funny, Carrie yeah. is, uh, Feel the muscle growth. I, I bet you, you could do nothing else and just add 200 calories and you'd start to see the muscle. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you start to see a little bit of muscle come back on your body. I mean, you don't even have to add the extra volume, but I'll, I'll, I would add the extra volume just for the extra stimulus. Cause you don't seem like you're overtrained. <clears throat> you're following everything. Well, I think that would be yeah. a break, uh, a perfect combination. Carrie, are you on Facebook? Uh, yes, I am. Yes. Okay. I'm going to have Doug send you access to the forum too. So I'd like to, you know, keep, keep us posted yeah. as you go through this process. Let us know how you're doing in three or four weeks and give us the feedback and we can make some now, minor adjustments. Now, Carrie, is maps anabolic the only program that you own? Uh, yeah, currently. I was waiting for Black Friday. <laughs> okay. What program did you want Black Friday? <laughs> Sorry? What program were you interested for in? When, um, for Black? The, maybe one that helps in balances. Like Symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to look into it. I haven't actually looked into it yet. So um, I do feel that, that one side is like everything, really, a bit <laughs> yeah. imbalanced. I'm going to send you symmetry. You get that one yeah, for free. Really? Yeah, yeah Thank of course. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got it. follow up to anabolic for sure. Yeah, we'll send that to you. And then next, after you're done with MAPS anabolic, follow symmetry. Mm -hmm. You'll love it. And keep us posted. Doug's going to put you in the forum. Thanks a million, guys. It's so nice to finally meet you. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. is. Yeah, it's and I, you know, I know you're in the Probably UK. But well, you are just so relatable. Thank you so much. Like, and I know yeah, you're in the UK, really but it looks sunny over there, isn't it? That's kind of yeah. rare, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's the sun's going down. That's west so the sun's kind of going down okay so i'm being fooled <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right and the well, lights are quite bright <laughs> yeah all right well thanks carrie thank you for calling in i appreciate the support See you, carrie so nice to meet you, you thank you it. bye i was gonna because i've been watching that series beckham oh you know yeah. what they you know what they gave him to put weight on him when he was a kid Huh. A pint is pretty. A pint of Guinness with an yeah, like egg in there, with dead. a raw egg. They did that young too. Yeah, yeah I think he was like twelve or thirteen. I, you dead. know, I think that's like an old school. That's a thing. English prescription for. Yeah. I was going to say to her that, as a joke, and and they do like oyster shots with Guinness. Like oh. when I was in Ireland, they they had me do that, and I was like, wow, yeah. okay, this is a thing. You give it to a twelve year old. <laughs> <laughs> what a, yeah, what I'll a, put a lead in your pencil. What a what a what a great lady, huh? I yeah. know what a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's, she's doing, doing great. great. Doing great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent job. She's following her, all the advice perfectly. She sounds like she's not overtrained. She says she rarely yeah. gets sore. She's got to keep going. That's it. It's just the, you know bit. the calories a little low. That's, That's it. it. She yeah. honestly and did phenomenal. So there, it's not that bad. But just by bumping, I bet if she would have just been eating two or three hundred more calories, she would have by seen, itself. Yeah, seen, she would have seen more you know, progress yeah, for yeah. sure. Our next caller is Greg from California. Greg, what's happening? So How can Greg. we help you? Hey guys, what up? Good to see ya. you too. I think. Adam and Sal, I've seen each of you a couple times on the um, the NCI calls, but Justin, this is my first time seeing you. Here I am, brother. He's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Drink it in. Um, I appreciate your time and everything. Uh, I actually started listening to you guys like in your first year um, and then kind of fell off and then didn't start listening again until I heard Sal on uh, John Deloney's show. And uh, yeah, I think... It's just been really motivational. You guys are like inspire me to get passionate about the business side of things in my business, and uh, yeah, and love all the parenting content as well. Oh, but, thanks, man. Uh, awesome. Awesome. How can we help you? Yeah. So basically, my question. I'm just going to kind of read what I sent in. My question is basically, how can I best organize, you know, my year of training and programming, um, given kind of a new phase of goals or life. Um, just background, I was a competitive lightweight rower, was competitive triathlete and runner for a while, for a long time. Um, but now with like with a little kid and family, that's kind of been mostly put on the back burner. I was just up in your neck of the woods in Santa Cruz doing a half Ironman in September. Um, but now I want to go more into strength. Um, 
partially because I know like I'll never, or not never, but I don't have the time to, you know, set any new PRs or hit any goals in the kind of endurance world. And I thought strength would be a fun way to transition. Uh, I do, it's that endurance stuff still kind of fills my soul. So I still do like a little one in the beginning of summer and maybe do something kind of longer at the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I would really appreciate your input as to, you know, what kind of program you put into place to improve, just see strength gains and the big, like major lifts yet still be able to transition easily, you know, into short bouts, maybe six to eight weeks at a time of endurance training to still have fun with that maps performance was built for you yeah, bro. performance was that's great. what that was made for someone just like you yeah. i mean it's you know yeah. it's a perfect program for someone like you but you know just more generally speaking right to to build strength and muscle from where you're at uh, it's gonna be a lot less training i mean okay people listening yep. this is important for people to understand when you're training at that level especially endurance training it's a lot of hours it's a lot of hours you know triathlon training ironman training you're logging hours and hours of, uh, you know, cycling, swimming, and running. It's just, it's just because the the name of the game is endurance and stamina. You do have to do long bouts of training. Mm-hmm. Now, strength training and muscle building isn't like that. Now, volume does play a role, but for someone like you, backing way off in the hours and literally going to the gym for an hour, three days a week, uh, it's you know all things being you know done well, diet and awesome, you're going to pack on a lot of muscle. Yeah. Uh, you're going to build muscle because the signaling's changing. It's different kind of signaling. Now, it's interesting that you said for six to eight weeks to train a particular way, you know, and this is how everybody should train, but especially someone with other responsibilities, you want to look at your total year and and, and it's really a, a four to one ratio is what it looks like. Four, you know, being, you know, kind of maintaining, feeling good, managing things. And then the one being the sprints, you know, so it's like, you know, I train for four weeks or let's say for four months and I'm just kind of taking care of myself, feeling good. Maybe it's a little bit of progress. And then I get that month where, you know, I'm getting more sleep. I can push it and I can take myself to another level. So you want to think of your progress throughout the year as a as like a step ladder where you're kind of cruising and then you sprint up a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to cruise a little bit, not lose too much, maybe maintain, sprint a little bit. That's a nice, healthy ratio or attitude uh, towards your training. Now, to go from strength, like traditional strength training to more endurance training, if you completely avoid the endurance training during the strength phase, there's going to be more to consider with the transition. Now, if you go from where you're at now to less endurance training, but you're doing some of it, okay, you're doing some of it with your strength training, you're still going to maintain quite a bit because your current level of fitness, your current level of skill even though let's say you go from five days a week of endurance training down to two, and now you're also doing maybe two or three days a week of strength training. So overall less training, but you're still doing some of what you did before. The transition is not going to be hard. If you completely avoid your skills of endurance and go straight strength training, now it's going to be difficult to transition. In which case I would say it would be a slow, gradual three week, four week transition from just strength training to more endurance training. Now, the reason why Adam jumped to MAPS Performance uh, is because the mobility work in MAPS Performance, although it's not as ideal as continuing some of the skills that you're doing now, the mobility training is a nice way to to, to prevent total loss it's a of skill. It's built-in longevity plan yeah. You yeah. Know, for your joints. I mean, if everything you're doing, especially endurance-wise and repetitive stress, like to be able to um, get get your joints to to be able to stabilize and and be strong, uh, you know, for the long haul. That's that's crucial, especially if you love uh, endurance train like you do. Uh, and that's why I love math performance too, because also too, you're going to be training in multiple planes in our our phase two um, part of that program as well. So it's it's a good way to to train for strength, but also too, like you're getting that kind of stimulus you're going to need, uh, so your body will react to any kind of lateral forces or or uh, you know. Uh, transverse type forces. I'll be even more prescriptive for you. And by the way, I think you're you're right on the right I, the like idea and plan here, right? I would run performance pretty much through the whole year. When you know you're going to get ready for one of these competitions, six weeks out is, is a good amount of time for you to do this. 
is you start building in the endurance training at the same time you start scaling back the volume of weight training. So it's like your year round, the plan is follow performance, get strong at it, do the mobility days, do it that's laid out. You have an endurance phase in there. You're not going to lose a ton because of that, even though it's not the same as running for, you know, three hours straight, it's still not going to put you to where you're deconditioned that bad enough that six weeks, you could get it back into prime shape. And as you increase your days of running uh, to get ready for like one of these Ironmans or whatever, you start to pull back on the weight training. And eventually get to a place where you're only weight training like one day a week and then mostly doing your endurance as you get closer to yeah. the race. So that's now, literally what it would look one, like. One thing I'll add, Greg, is um, I would not, you know, if you could, I would not take out any of the skills that you're proficient at now during that phase of building strength because here's what's going to happen. You're going to switch to strength. And because your body right now, let's say, is prime for endurance, just the switch alone, you're going to pack on some muscle. I, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if you gained 10 pounds of lean body mass in a, in a very short period of time. Now, here's what that means. That means you're, you're a different body. Your new body, yeah. So 10 pounds, on, even though it's muscle and muscle is functional, y your skills are going to be off a bit. Your, your, your movement's going to be a little off if you don't practice the skill along, in other words, coordinate that muscle to the skill. Like if you stop running now, if I snap my fingers and added 10 pounds of functional muscle on you, even if it was very functional, and then you went for a run, it'd feel a little awkward. It's like putting like a, a like a small rise in your shoe or something. And you know, you would notice when you were moving, like, oh, I'm a little different. Something's not, I'm not as efficient. So I would not avoid any of your, if you want to maintain those skills while building muscle, I would maintain, I would still do them to some degree so that you can coordinate that because you're going to build muscle by doing this for sure. I mean, you go from what you're doing now to what we're saying, yeah, your body's going to respond. A great way to do that is on a mobility days. Yep. You just would go for a mile run, reduce the intensity of it. Yeah. Yeah. So just you're, you're going through the skill of it. And this is what we do with any sport really is, is to combo um, that skill focused drilling uh, on those mobility days, the mobility beforehand to kind of get the body to react and, and prime it uh, for, for all that type of like very specific skill to, to your sport. Uh, but then, Keep practicing it. Keep practicing it on those days just with lower intensity. A perfect way to do this is on the mobility days, 10 minutes of that skill. It could be swimming. It could be running. It could be rowing. But 10 minutes of doing that before you go into your, your mobility or mobility first and then 10 minutes of that and and maintain that while running performance, you'll keep enough of yeah. that. Now, you, now you work in the space. Are you a chiropractor? What do you do? Do you train and coach people? Uh, yeah, both. Uh, so I'm a physical therapist oh, and then I train and coach people and then going through NCI level one right now. Oh, good. I was going to give you maps prime nice. and prime pro, but you're, you're a PT, so you know your stuff. So yeah. excellent. Yeah, and I have them. Too. Oh, you do. <laughs> oh, okay, right good. All right. Well, excellent. Yeah, no, I think you're on the right track, dude. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say the biggest for someone like you with your experience and knowledge, um, just, just be very ca cognizant of the added stress of, you know, you got a toddler, you're going to have a new baby. Um, and that's, that means you're going to have to modify your training stimulus. The good news is you're so fit now, you're probably not going to lose a lot, but it'll be harder to progress. That's the challenge. Challenge going to be pushing yourself to go any further, but don't worry about going backwards. I think you're going to maintain. Well, it also well. sounds like you have kind of the right mindset that, you know, you're going into this, I mean, you know, another baby type of deal and you're transitioning in your life to like focusing more on strength. So it's okay if you're not breaking records on the Ironman, right. Or better than you, like you should expect not to necessarily be better. I think that's a good mindset. It's like, but still do it because you love it, right? Like, I love that idea of like, hey, I'm going to put on some muscle. Probably 10 pounds heavier of you of muscle is not going to perform as good as the other older version of you in Ironman because it's just a different focus. But so, you can lift more weight? Yeah, but you'll be, you'll be stronger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll probably even look better, but it's okay. And you'll still be able to do something that you enjoy and love every you know few months you do one of those. I think that's a great way to look at it and a great attitude. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been easy. I'll say that it's like that making that transition. Like it's still like, it gives me, I don't know. It's really, it's really hard to show up to Santa Cruz knowing like, Oh, this is going to feel slow. Yeah. Um, and even the thought of like gaining, I mean, I, like I want to, like I want to gain the five, 10 pounds of muscle, but probably for the last 20 years, I haven't been above 160. Like it's yeah. just like this mental thing. It's really interesting. So it's, I think it's going to be really 
and part of the reason I wanted to do it was like to to explore that right that personal thing and then and I think it'd be beneficial for clients too like yeah. having gone through that yep. journey you know absolutely absolutely you know the other thing too Greg consider like you know, having uh, a, having one child and having two children like no matter what you do no matter I don't care what you do whether you train for a triathlon you lift weights or you just whatever it's all a trans it's gonna be you're, you're not you're not gonna be the same no matter what everything it's a transition for anybody. So what you're going through is what every father who gives a shit uh, is going to go through. So yours is just a little different because you're pretty consistent with your workouts. But it's no, no matter what you were doing before, yeah. it's going to be different after. Things are going to change. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Definitely different and yeah. way better. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Right. That's sure. right. Perfect, man. Well, right on, Greg. Thanks for calling in, dude. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for your time. You got it. Yeah, you know, uh, for people who don't know, I, I pulled it up because I forgot, but a triathlon and an Ironman triathlon this is a it's, two and a brutal run two bike point, swim bro it's a 2.4 mile swim yeah. a 112 mile mile bike ride and a tw and then a marathon a 26 12 mile bike ride. 112 mile <laughs> bike ride that's a full iron uh, tri uh iron man yeah. and then a, and then it, and then you run and then you do a marathon after that 26 miles so I know he's going to do a half. So everyone's like, oh, half marathon. Half marathon's crazy. Dude, I mean, half. Sitting uh, on one of those little bike seats for that Oh, Ooh, yeah. I wonder if they do like a, like a, like a one fiftieth Ironman. Do they do that? I know there's a half. It sounds like, <laughs> it sounds, I mean, he yeah. sounds like he's been doing this for most of his life. So yeah. I think he's going to be pretty good. He follows performance in there. He adds in a little bit of the skills uh, on, on the mobility. It sounds though, to me, it's going to be the mental part. That's going to be really always, tough. For him. It always is. Yeah. Like that. And which, by the way, when you listen to this, Craig, I think this is important that you, I think it's good. Like I actually, I know you recommended the skills, but I, you, honestly, this, who cares if you get, if you lose a little bit of the skill of the Ironman thing, the, 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 the exercise here is the mental exercise of, can I phase out of that part of my life? If you get too obsessed with, I don't want to lose too much of my Ironman skills, then you'll probably end up overtraining or overdoing it. Name one thing that would not change in your life when you add another kid, uh, you know, everything's going to change unless you're just like, I'm not going to change anything. And you know, wife's going to do everything else for me. Right. Everything, everything's going to change. Unless you're completely self-centered. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing you can do about it. So look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free fitness guides. They're free and there's a lot of them and you can get all of them. Again, they cost nothing. You can find all of us also on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump. Justin, I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Adam.